Welcome, guys, to the season finale of Dungeons & Dragons. It's been quite an eventful, uh, what's it been? Like maybe two months or so that we've been two doing months. the show. Yeah. And I do want to say, today, we are going to finish the campaign. And again, uh, we're going to be joined today with uh, Rich, obviously, McConnell, obviously, and of course, our fearless, our all-knowing, our omniscient dungeon master, Riku D20. Welcome, guys. But well, hey, everyone. Riku D20 here. Just call me Riku. It's easier. For those of you here that were last time, it's good to see you again. For those of you that are new, welcome. It's nice to meet you at our season finale. So maybe this is uh, kind of not the best time to be tuning in for the first time, but don't worry. I got a quick recap for you guys. After all, I'm the dungeon master for this campaign. But what does that mean? These three gentlemen here control three characters and everything about them. A barbarian, a warlock, and a paladin. But what do I do? I, I control the world. From the weather to the trees, to their friends and their foes, to everything that they'll see and everything that they'll know. But I'm no one scary. I have been trying to get them killed through multiple encounters for the last couple of weeks or anything. I'm just a humble storyteller. And what a story it's been so far, even as this wild chapter starts to draw to its close. They started their journey retrieving an amulet of a fallen gem collector, fighting through gangs of goblins, and discovering a creepy undead device which was pocketed by Rich. They had an epic battle of guts and willpower, in the form of pounding spicy chicken tendies, before catching a sweet boat ride the next morning. They bought some sailgrass uh, from a dude in a nice skull mask, and then they found a dead body on board. A homunculus, which turned into a shadowy, demonic figure. A mini-boss if I've ever seen one. Rich ate a crystal and went unconscious. McConnell nearly died, but the party pulled through, along with a clutch heel from their new friend, the Skull Guy, Eximus. They dealt with the aftermath, unwound a bit at the finest brothel on the island, the Heaven's Heel, where Rich shat out both the crystal and a poop monster that he named Mishit. But alas, it was slain quickly before they could bond. But after calming the owner, they met Ozzy, their point of contact for their next job. A very lucrative job paying 200 gold per person. The next morning, they set forth into the wilderness to investigate some strange occurrences and some reports of golden spider silk. They ran into a group of bandits, one of them named Timmy, who has been straight up beheaded, which Rich brought back from the grasp of death with that same undead spike he brought. After looting their camp, they ventured deeper in the woods, where they were ambushed by a bunch of giant intelligent spiders, smarter than even Asmin, and a giant spider-like aberration. They pushed it back, but from its abdomen burst forth an elf-like creature named Ellie, who removed from the carcass a very similar spike, like a larger version of what Rich has found. The mystery getting deeper, they allied with her, as well as the spiders themselves, and went deeper into the forest, where they found another spike corrupting the ground which Asmin fearlessly waded into corruption in to free. They consulted Ozzy, and to get Ellie back to her home so they could consult her tribe elders and find out what was going on, they took a nifty portal she had set up. But something went wrong and they found themselves lost in an unknown colorful forest, which they made more colorful almost immediately by eating dubious, unidentified mushrooms. They met a horse that talked and Timmy started to walk, and led by telepathic messages from Ellie, they made it to another portal where she explained she learned something, and that a set of trials and powers awaited them. They leapt into the final portal and nearly drowned in the first of the trials, but with quick thinking and a ton of damage, they were able to overcome it. Now they've landed foot at the set of the second trial, with the time around them starting to warp and some hair potentially about to fall out. This chapter turns to its final page. And how will it end, I wonder? Well, hey, that's not my call to make. You boys ready to finish this off? Hell yeah, yeah. dude. Yeah, yeah I'm dude. Ready to do. I'm ready to go. All Bad right. Sex by the end of this campaign. <laughs> so, where we left off last, Rich had felt his head and noticed that his uh, temples were starting to show, getting some front. Uh, some front baldness happening, but nothing too, nothing too intense. But Asmin, you were feeling your scalp. 
And I think we were going to roll a dice for you to see what happened. Now, Asmin, I'm going to need you to roll a d20. But let me explain what's going to happen. Just so, you know, Chat can see that I'm not trying to pull any punches here. Okay. If you roll a 1 to a 5, your character will have lost all his hair. If it rolls a 6 to a 10, we're going to be seeing some very brutal male pattern baldness. Yeah. We've seen if you that roll, before. <laughs> if you roll from an 11 through a 6 uh, up to a 15, yeah. it'll be looking pretty, pretty nice, you know, pretty solid. Okay. And if you roll from a 16 through a 20, you will have a head full of hair and envy of any man at any age. I think that's a fair gamble for one that's ventured into uh, this unknown lair. What do you uh, think? Yeah, I think that sounds great. Um, all right. You ready? All right. Uh, I guess I should do uh, a survival roll, huh? Oh, just uh, just type in a slash roll space 1d20 in chat. And it should automatically roll the dice for you. Oh! Yeah. 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 It's, uh, how, much hair, how much hair do I have? How much hair do I have? So you, your character, yeah. you first notice that you've actually aged uh, quite a bit, mm -hmm. about 15, maybe even 20 years. You've, you've got your beard's gotten a lot longer. You're seeing some grays, but you've noticed that just a very small bit of loss in the very front, but nothing, nothing quite much on your scalp. Your hair is longer. Uh, it's actually quite manly. You look like a, like a gladiator, some gray hairs, but you actually have not lost much hair at all. You've managed to turn fate to your side. Nice. Yep. I, uh, I knew it. I knew there you it. go, dude. Uh-huh. There we fucking go. That's good. I like that a lot. That's perfect. Man, perfect. we we literally we we had a, a a humanized piece of shit. We had a horse who was saying he was bugging. We literally had a, a giant bag with infinite space, but I think that this is the least realistic thing that's happened in the entire campaign. <laughs> yeah, probably. Speaking of least realistic. There is a a dead body among with you. I, I mean, it's a it's a it's a walking dead body now. Now, uh, now, Rich, you you look at it. This is Timmy. Uh, he stood back up again, and you can tell he's bruised on one side. I uh, remember uh, last session, you guys were fighting off Hydrodia, which was summoned at the end of the trial, which slammed him into the wall. He's limping a little bit, just very slowly, and he'll like walk into a barrier, kind of just fall back, struggle back to his feet and do it again and again. He wants to go forward, but he just quite can't. And at the same time, you hear a booming voice above you. You look up at the ceiling, and just like the previous room, it looks almost like a starry night sky, but just coalesce into a painting. And you see that same figure. It looks like a tiger, a four-legged beast, with grand reddish orange wings soars above you not leaving a shadow it says well done you've made it through the first floor of my home catch your breath but if you would like your youth back you may want to proceed through this next trial quickly how uh can you describe its tail to me yes its tail is long and bountiful it is not spiked at all, it is just it's like the tail of a tiger. Any other questions, Rich? No, I have enough. I have enough. How is he talking to us if he's a tiger? I'll ask him that. How do you talk if you are a tiger? You hear a deep, booming laughter from the horizon, at least where it would be on this sky like ceiling. Come find me and then make me tell you as it bursts into laughter, echoing into the distance. I wonder if all tigers can talk, and he's the only one who's been willing to give up the charade. Right? I don't think he's... this is a tiger. I think this is a liger. Mmm, because he's, he's lying. lying? You're right, yeah. It's a liger. Mm-hmm. Uh... So let's go. Yeah, I'm ready. So can we walk through this force field here, or what the hell? You can certainly uh... try. Okay. Yeah, I'm, go a, first. I'm gonna go up next to the force field, and I want to take my axe, and I want to do uh, Riku. I want to do 
Uh, reckless attack. Go for it. Roll that attack with advantage. I will. Uh, give me a minute. Okay. Huge. That most definitely uh -huh. hits. Roll your damage. Okay. Oh. Not bad. You pull up your great axe and you bring it down with a mighty swing. The barrier, at first it seems like ethereal waves of light, but almost before your axe swings into it, you feel like the light collected in front of you. And as the great axe hits it, it bounces back off, almost like a ball hitting a wall while school kids play. And since you're reeling back, you don't take any damage. But you can also see that the sides of the barrier start to warble. This thing seems to be extremely sturdy, like a wall of light. And it does not seem like your axe had any real effect. Okay. Hmm. Uh, Should I do an arcana check on the wall? Yeah, sure. Uh, do you want me to hit the wall? Rich, how are you feeling, by the way? Because you took a, you took quite a, uh, you know, a, a tumble through that that water thing, elemental. Are you are you doing good, Rich? Do you need you need a like a pick me up at all, or you heal me? Huh. I, 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 un I unironically I cannot. I cannot. I'm out. I'm tapped. Don't you have? Don't you have like a bunch of potions that you distributed? Could don't could you, you have your own potions that you can use? That I gave you out of the bag. Stop I'm looking at me for answers. I don't have the answers. You have the answers. Lay your hands upon me. No, I I can't. I'm fucking tapped out, dude. The hell. <sighs> Okay, I'll drink one of my pot stones. Got it. Yeah, so you have, uh, so we haven't quite actually melded any of the stuff in the yet. So the, the pot stones are currently um, not used. But you have two mysterious potions that you've looted from those bandits. Oh, oh, that's mysterious oh I thought the pot stones were, were healthy boys. Uh, ah, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, use one of them. I'll, I'll use one of the mysterious potions. Perfect. You take one. You pound it, and instantly you feel your insides start to warm. And you can feel some of those, like a crushing feeling uh, from your battle before, starts to recover, and you can feel yourself breathing a little bit easier, and you will regain. Let's take a look. You recover 12 HP. Damn, that's a lot. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. For for flavor, can a little bit of blood drip from one of my eyes? And then I look at Asmin and I go, nothing happened. <laughs> Certainly. Uh, I'm sure it can, because Asmin, when you turn back to him and see this blood uh, falling from his eyes, you start to feel funny yourself. Now, we're going to do this in an interesting order. McConnell, you're investigating that wall, right? Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. As you get to it, you can kind of feel this rising energy within you. you can, it's like something inside of you starting to vibrate, and suddenly a wave of sensation crashes upon you. You can barely move. You're standing still there, and you can feel every nerve in your body starting to tingle. I'm your tingling. Heart, your heart starts to beat. You take a deep breath in, you take a deep breath out. and you can feel like a little bit of throbbing in the back of your skull. And at first it's a little bit scary, but it's kind of like this fog is lifting in front of you. You're feeling simultaneously warm, but cool, as you can feel yourself sweating a little bit behind your armor. It's and you're feeling good. I'm feeling you're good? You're feeling good. In fact, you're feeling, feeling quite energetic. In fact, as a bonus action, you can now dash at the same time Asbin, as you look back at Rich and you see that, uh, that little uh, teardrop of blood dripping from his eyes, you don't know if it's real or not, because all of a sudden the strange glyphs on the wall start to weave in and out of each other. The colors of the floor beneath you, what used to seem like stars, start to feel like little blossoms scattered about in the breeze, blooming and fading away, like life cycling through the ages right beneath your feet. It starts to wobble a little bit, but you feel like your mind is clear. 
In fact, you feel sharper and smarter than you've ever before. There's been some changes made to your character sheet. It seems like these mushrooms you took last session are starting to have their second wave of effects. Now, Rich, you've eaten three mushrooms. You're feeling the same sensations as McConnell. You get that little bit of a dash, and you actually have a small buff in your sheet as well. But you notice that the other two seem a lot smaller than you. And they look at you, and you seem quite a lot bigger. Bruh! Yes! Rich! Yeah. Rich, you're oh. huge. I Rich, didn't hear you. You are huge. You're huge, and you're also feeling kind of sick. Ooh. Seems like you're going to be having a little bit of a trouble using your attacks, but you're big. You are much tougher, and you're also really fast. And your eyes glance off to the sides, and you notice that these doors have started to open, unveiling a swirling blackness, a blackness within. It seems so, like the barriers ahead of you. Oh, sorry, go ahead. We're mentally no longer high. Oh, you guys are, uh, you guys are definitely not sober. Uh, the effects have all compounded, uh, and you guys have some magical effects now kicking in to help you guys through this trial. I'm so ready. So we're, we're kind of faded, but like. Okay. So am I at minus two int now? Has it gone up? Uh, you are uh, well above uh, minus two, actually. In fact, you are at 16 intelligence. So that's plus three and plus four wisdom. What? That blue mushroom seemed to have given you quite a lot of mental clarity, but who knows how long it will last. Okay, guys, well, I think obviously, yeah, obviously, guys, uh, yeah, Jamie, let's pull up this other thing on the side here, and um, I, I think really the, the way we should do this is let's go into one of these different portals. We could choose one of the four. Is that correct, Riku? Yeah, I definitely think you can. One of the four portals. Okay, um, so here's what I think we should do. We should, um, let's go in the top left. You know that's what? The, that's the closest one. I think I've... I know you're really smart right now, okay? Yeah. But I think I've got a better idea. I say we take Timmy and point him in the direction of one of these portals and see where he ends up. That is good. Good idea, sir, but I actually think that this is not the correct course of action. I think the correct course of action actually would be to not use Timmy, because if we were to lose Timmy in that situation or he was to be destroyed in a situation that we could otherwise prevent, but Timmy would not be able to because he is a zombie, then we would be losing him. And it's obvious that Timmy is somehow attracted in one way or another to this area, to some degree of source, which means that we would need to have Timmy lead us even further into this temple rather than just sacrificing him for something that could just prove to be completely fruitless. Also, why don't we try to attack the side on the wall where the force field is coming out of? As Asmund's talking, um, I, I lumber towards the portal, really just loving the, the, the giant growth that I've had. I, I, I like stomp as loud as I can so everybody kind of feels the floor shake under my massive girth. And then I take out of my bag one of the uh, cross bolts that I have that, you know, usually would be a pretty hefty object for me to lift up and I would need to, you, you know, actually try to shoot it from, from a weapon. But now it's a mere toothpick and I just flick one through one of the portals to try to see where it ends up. I just flick the cross bolt through the portal. That's a, that's a very good idea. You flip one in. And which one are you choosing? Just one of, my, one of the cross bolts. Oh, uh, I saw like, which of the portal? You, you want to do the one that Asmund's yes, looking at yeah, right yeah, here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, looking at. You take it and you just chuck it in with a hoof. And you can hear tingling happening all the way over here. And can I see if the... Uh... It, it, does it look like it came through the other end, like completely with the same molecular makeup? Or uh, was there some shenanigans going on? Yep, it's right here. And it's lying there, ready to be picked up again. Okay. Uh, should we send Miz shit on a little bit of a scouting mission? Yeah. Miz shit. That's a smart idea. Yeah, let's do that. What, what do you boy? mean it's a smart idea? It's literally the same idea I had, except with mid shit 
Yeah, but I'd rather lose Miss Shit. Miss Shit's useless, but uh, Miss Shit didn't lead us to the temple. Uh, the no, Miss Shit's not. I don't, I don't think Miss Shit's useless. I do. I used to think that until I saw Miss Shit clog up a goddamn drain and almost save our lives. I, I, uh, I thought Miss Shit was pretty useless too until he had, uh, sub Caitlyn re rate me. But yeah, we'll throw, we'll throw Miss Shit through the portal and, uh, we'll have him end up on the other side. What does he see? All right. So as he's, uh, looking into it, he sees pitch black darkness. He can't see through it. He wants to go to the other side? Yeah. All right. In he goes. And he passes through. And he, and he can see uh, that bolt right beneath him. But he starts to hear a rumbling. Right behind him, the door starts to contort, the shadow folding in and of itself. And it bursts. Small bubbles of darkness scatter across that entire area and start to form and mold into what looks like a small flying tiger with wings. What the fuck? It seems oh, like when a non-living creature goes through, nothing happens. But when a living creature goes through one of these doors, something occurs. And to make matters worse, this door has vanished. Yeah, fuck me, shit. Let's just let him die. Mission's let's dead. Yeah, let's go home. Dead. Look at that shit. All I right. think we just go, man. I think we each one of us goes into the individual door. We get through all on our own. And then we make our way over there. There's, look how many of them are, there are. What the fuck are you talking about? Well, each, does each door lead to a different place? Is that right? Probably. Well, how do we know that? We didn't. Well, we I, didn't can flick it. I, I can flick a cross bolt through each one and we can find out. Uh, okay. Yeah. Try the other one. Try, try this one down here. All right, before you guys jump in, I'm going to have you guys roll initiative just so that we have a oh, turn order going forward. Well, here we go, boys. This is it. <clears throat> That's okay. a 9 plus 2 for That's an 11 from Aspen. That's not too bad. Okay. Big, big, big. Mm. Ooh, a 2 from McConnell. That's huge, man. Damn back, gentlemen. Fuck. This yep. is bad. That was a 10, and you were rolling. Were you rolling for mission on that one? It sounds like it. Yep. And you want to roll for yourself? That was that was intended for me. I'll I'll roll for Miss Shit now. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. So we'll add you in for ten. Okay. So now we got a turn order, and we are going to start with Asmin. You guys have your plan ready to go. Good luck. Okay. How much intelligence do I have again? I have like a sixteen. Yep. Oh fuck. Okay. Um. Uh, all right. I've got to really make a good decision here. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's gonna be okay. Um, all right, so, and I can't go in the same portal that Ms. Shit went in, right? It seems like that portal has been destroyed. It was a trap. Fuck. Okay, all right, fine. Um, I think that I'm just gonna go try to go through another portal. All yeah, right. I, I wanna go, I wanna go You're through You're gonna go portal. through it? Yep, I'm gonna just go through it. Perfect. You step into the portal, the darkness envelops you. And yep. this one lets you step out on this side. Now, could you give me an athletics or an acrobatics check? Yes. Oh. I got a plus five though. You do have plus five. That is a one plus five for athletics. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, you're taken by surprise because as you take a step out of that portal, you can feel space starting to warp around you and it feels like the floor in front of you has extended out onto a highway and suddenly you feel like something is pushing you out. You start what? to tumble across the floor, but very curiously enough, you notice that there's something behind you. As you start to tumble and get yeeted across the floor, you notice that two small constructs are following behind you. One from this side and one from there. And as you, Benny Hill, and just get shot across the room into the next one, tumbling the entire way, mm -hmm. they follow you and shoot out chaotically. You unfortunately are sucked into the next portal. Uh, what? Uh, what? 
and you find yourself spat out back in the first area. Oh! Nice turn! <laughs> One of them tumbles out behind you. Wait, he's here! Okay. And another disappears into the darkness. All part of my plan. It's a, it's a construct, you called it? It is a construct. It is whirring. And from its arms, it switch blades out to arm blades ready for combat. Wait, switch blades? Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's right. Well, I got an axe. What the hell am I worried about? Can I attack him? Unfortunately, the tumbling has spent all of your energy oh, trying ass. to get back in. And uh, God, turn has come to an end. Okay. Rich, it nice is on you. Dude. Literally spent his turn tumbling. <laughs> I'm just rolling, boys. I'm rolling. All right. I, uh... Okay. Step well, on it, Rich. Yeah, can I just step? Like, I'm, I'm fucking huge, man. Like, each step I take is mad. I, I literally... I want to charge my foot up with like a giant eldritch blast. Like I, I want to fill my foot with the energy of my deity. I literally like for I, I I close my eyes as I get right on top of it, and I pretend for just a second that I am the most beautiful, dominant woman on the face of the earth, and I imagine that the construct is me as I put all of my force and hatred for myself into this construct, and I step on it. <laughs> are you, you're gonna be making a melee attack with your foot. Is, is, is that what it is? Or are you trying to like cast a spell or something? What are you trying to do? Well, I mean, you, you gotta ask how big you are in relation to the construct. How big am I in relationship to the construct? You're massive. The construct is maybe the size of like your shin. Can I give myself a stiletto heel made out of Eldritch energy as I step on it? Yeah, I'm down to just call it you casting an Eldritch Blast for flavor. Uh, you will be making this attack with disadvantage as you can feel your stomach rumbling from the cocktail of three mushrooms. But you are big and you are powerful. Would you like to roll your attack? Yes. Stiletto smash. What do I roll? Just uh, roll an Eldritch Blast with disadvantage. Oh, come on. Come on, Rich, Rich. That decent. rolls up to a 13. Uh, you pull out your, uh, uh, you, you form this stiletto of energy around your heel and you send it just careening toward uh, this construct that is uh, getting its bearings on the floor. Oh, and really think, quick, have, yep. as I do that, as I do that, I go, pathetic whelp. Oh I say my that. God. Yeah. Your, your voice booms uh, from your larger frame. But at the last moment, you can see its legs just oriented in a, in a very odd way. And it kicks itself back at the last moment. Your attack does not connect. It oh. remains standing. No! No! Uh -oh. that's, a, that's a tough cookie. Uh -oh. I, say, uh -oh. I say, I say, I say, I say, lucky worm. <laughs> Perfect. So you moved a little bit and you used your action for your attack. Is there anything else you would like to do with your turn? Uh, what what else could I do? I think um I think you have about ten feet of movement left. No, I'll stay where I am. I'll stay up close on the construct. Perfect. Stay I'll right there, there next to Asmin, right next to this construct. Perfect. Yeah. It is your turn. It is uh, your familiar turn actually. Mishit is now uh, starting back up in that in that map above you. Now, Mishit is glancing around, seeing these shadowy uh, tiger-like figures each one cackling out in all kinds of eldritch languages and tongues and can feel these words echoing through its head it is going to need to make a wisdom save now i will go ahead and make this for you just in the interest of timing yeah, yeah. making things nice and you can, you can feel almost through your telepathic link uh, these echoes trying to creep in but you can feel the Miz shit was strong enough to push them out. No damage has been taken, but you can tell setting foot in that area would be quite dangerous. Would you like to instruct Miz shit to move around? So all of the three other portals are open? Yes, all the other three portals to your knowledge are fully open and Miz shit can explore. Um, and these little yellow circles 
around these little tigery boys? What exactly are they? Can you give me an Arcana check, please? Yes. Ooh. Oh, yeah, they're just yellow circles. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, they're just boobies. Yeah, it just seems some like a uh, eldritch energy around it. Uh, but even with no knowledge of the uh, of what this magic might be, you can still tell that if you're too close to those uh, floating shadowy target guys, uh, uh, tiger guys, bad things may happen. Okay, uh, I command Ms. Shit to go into this portal right here. And just uh, see what happens. Yeah, I, I I command him. Excellent. I'll go ahead and move him for you. 10, 15, 20. It steps in and just vanishes in the darkness. <gasps> you feel like you lose all your connections uh, from your familiar until suddenly you're reunited and it shows up next to you. It seems like there is a pattern to these doors, but it seems like you're going to have to try to find a way through this invisible maze before these various magical effects take down your party. Fuck, man, it's like the Lost Woods. <laughs> yes. Now you can feel that it seems like uh, as Mishid comes out of that portal back in this first area, you can feel some kind of time energy swirl around it, and its movement has been refreshed. It can move an additional 60 feet if you would like. OK, um, I went. OK, so. Bottom, top, um, bottom, top, top, bottom. Um, bottom top top bottom top. Uh, I'll I'll have I'll have him go through. I'll have him go through this portal right here. Excellent. Yeah, he should have plenty of movement speed because he still had some left over. Ms. Shit shoots uh, forth, uh, freed uh, from uh, this weird area that he's been, and seems to be uh, pretty happy that's been reunited with this party and hasn't been uh, left for dead. He vanishes into the darkness. But much to your dismay, dismay, you see him step right out no. of the main floor. Fuck! No, 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 that's that's what I thought would happen, actually. But this time, something very odd starts to happen. These light barriers on the other st side start to flicker, all four of them. They start to waver as the walls, each brick starts to just jut out, jut oh, back. Kind of I wave, didn't think that was gonna happen. Like a wave. They start to break apart into fractal shapes, swirling into each other, starting to form into blades. And yeah, I didn't think that Good job, happen. Rich. Yo, good As job. Hundreds of daggers to both, uh, on both sides start shooting across the uh, uh, this area. The barriers disappear but this area is covered in a rain of shooting daggers. And Mishit will take two damage. Oh no. Damn, that's fine. That's not even a dagger, man. That's like a kitchen knife. That's not a big deal. Yeah, you know he's gonna complain about it though for weeks. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh, what the oh. hell? Look at that. Little knives. Look at that. What? You can see him. Oh shit! Oh my god! Look at that! Oh! What the fuck? Okay, all right. Yeah, we gotta watch out. Wait, one of oh, them's like Frogger. <laughs> one of them's like got. There's goddamn hatchets in there. It's okay. Yeah, you, you just see, avoid them, man. You just avoid the attacks. You see hatchets, long swords, daggers, all kinds of weapons just flying from uh, the pitch black darkness just across them with reckless abandon, not aiming anything in particular. The shadowy tiger figures remain completely unharmed, laughing and mocking you. And what do, they, what do they say when they mock us? Yeah, what do they say? You're not quite sure. It feels like it's a, in a chorus of all kinds of spoken and unspoken languages, but you can feel uh, this deep, just irritation, sarcasm, and a little bit of sadistic entertainment all at the same time. Well, Obviously, what's it gonna be? It falls to me to uh, take care of this construct. Go ahead. I, I might be too far away. 
Uh, I'll move as far as close as I can to it. Can I go up to it? It's a uh, yes. You actually can because remember, uh, you wouldn't have had enough movement originally. But remember, as a bonus action, you can dash. Oh, I'm dashing. Of that, of that red, uh, that red mushroom uh, that you had consumed, you're able to close the distance. And would you like to attack? Fuck yeah! I want to swing my greatsword right at, at its face. Perfect. Let's go see your greatsword attack. All right. Huge. Let's shoot the greatsword. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. All right. That most definitely hits. Roll your damage. Huh. That's a lot. That actually is a lot. Wow. That okay. is a, that's a pretty heavy hit. Uh, you pull your greatsword back as you're dashing forth, and you can feel this energy welling up within you. Your, your feet are flying one in front of another as if there's no resistance. Almost like you don't want to stop sprinting, but of course you do because you are a warrior, true and true, a, a very, very strong paladin. And you swing your greatsword into it. Now, this thing tries to just juke to the side, just like the way it dodged uh, Rich's stiletto heel. But not for you. Your uh -huh. eyes are clear, and your greatsword just slashes right into it. The thing is fast. It has a good amount of dodging ability, but not enough HP, as it shatters to dust in one swing of your blade. <laughs> it is gone. Dude, I love it. Fucking easy claps. Perfect. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. That was good. That was really good. Good job. Oh, yeah. Excellent. You uh, have to... Man, I kind of want to go through that portal right there to my left. What do we have? Where did, where did that one put you? Or where did that... Where... Uh, Miss shit came out of that one, right? Uh, okay, so the the top portal, I don't really know what would happen if you go through it. it, it that goes to the one where the X is. The left one on the bottom, that's the one that Asma went through, that uh, which he pulled the construct from. So that that's actually not a bad one to go through, uh, because I believe that was right here, right? Um, it puts you into this room, which puts us past the flying knives. The bottom right one is the unknown portal. We don't know exactly where that's going to put us out. The only thing that we have to accomplish right now is we know if we can go through this bottom left portal, we dodge basically all of the tigers and the fucking daggers but we still need to pull down this one wall once we pull down that one wall we're fucking in and we beat this trial so we just need to figure out a way to get the wall down and then we know that we can take this portal to safety to walk through it okay uh do i have enough movement to go through the portal uh which portal would you like to go through this one right here to my left right here Ah, to your left. So this one right here. Yeah. Yes, you have look about 35 feet left from uh, just counting the tiles after your dash. Oh, all right, all right boys, wish me luck. Bye. So all right. Feet. All right. You're gonna jump through this one. All right. Yeah. You step into the darkness, and sure enough, just as predicted, you show up back right below those uh, uh, those uh, those daggers. Now, could you give me an athletics check as well? Shit. Don't fuck this up, man. Athletic. Oh, no, I'm good. No, nah, that's good. what I thought, Not too. A... That's what I thought, too. Trust, trust, trust. Trust in the heart of the cards. Okay. Right. Heart of the cards, indeed. 15 plus 5 up to a 20. You start, uh, you can feel that same welling of energy. Now, you're, you're feeling like you want to move fast. But as it sends you rocking through, you're able to just kind of, it's like a superhero fall uh, in a movie. You get your knees there, you just dig in, and you're able to kind of get yourself into a nice solid stance but you can see in that distance darkness yet another one of those constructs have started to roll one of them is rolling oh. at you and you glance to the side yet another one is moving but they rocket past you completely out of control wait what they rocketed past me yep they're not able uh to uh really stop themselves as you can see they kind of curl up into a ball like a roly-poly Oh, it disappears wow. back into the darkness. Oh, shit. Like Sonic so, the Hedgehog. Boys, every time... I, okay. Can I yell? I'm going to yell to them what shout. I think, okay? Go for it. Listen, I think every time you go through a portal, it's going to try to push you all the way to the next portal. <laughs> so every time you go through, you got to you gotta make sure you land on your feet. So be careful. Um, uh, by the way, I'm good. Riku, is there, are these levers here uh, right next to Timmy, to the left of Timmy? Good question. Yeah. 
You look into that, and at first you feel like it's some kind of mechanism, like levers and wheels. You notice it's actually a fixed emplacement, like a like a, a giant crossbow. If you go up to it, it seems like you'll be able to actually pull them out and sit into it. And man, this turret. There's some kind of ancient weaponry in this tile, in, in this trial, that you could potentially use if you tinker with that device well enough. Okay. Yeah, I I, th I, I want to do that. Yeah, that that's that's sixteen in at work, boys. <clears throat> All right. So, and McConnell, I think that is the end of your turn. Yes, sir. Yeah, really quick on McConnell's turn. <laughs> the, those two constructs, did they go through a, the, at the same portal or a different portal to shoot out where they are right now? It's a it. A, looking at exactly what happened, your character sees that it is the same exact behavior that you saw last time. Uh, yeah. Same athletic things happened, and they went in and out of the same portals. So they went into this portal to come out of this one. Right over here. That is correct. Great deduction. Okay, so bottom right portal. Okay. Bottom right. Bottom right. Fuck. Oh, I I can't choose wisely. The the wall is tricky. I I think it's it's the construct's turn though, not mine. That is correct. Uh, the con the first construct, you know, would have moved. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't get much of a chance to as it met uh, the Paladin's blade head on. But this other one does. It relocates up and swings at you. Oh no, oh, no. watch out, Richard! Hey, you're still getting used to your larger body, but as you start to lumber around, you can feel that, yeah, your armor kind of grew with you. It will be able to normally block. In fact, you have a little bit additional armor class, but unfortunately, it's not enough this time as this thing is fast and kind of darts around uh, your armor and it sinks one of its arm blades into you for four damage. God damn. So you said my armor grew with me? Your armor did grow with you. You actually have plus two to AC. You can tank a little bit, actually. Um, did every, so everything, all of me grew. All of you grew, that is correct. I'll take that damage. <laughs> I'd like to, I, I, I think I know exactly where this is going, so I just will refrain from saying more. Asmin, it is your turn. Okay, all right, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get right on over here to this machine. And I'm going to try to get inside of the machine and use it. All right. So now as uh, you start to move toward it, you can kind of feel the world around you is starting to warp as you hear that mysterious laughter. Again, it's from that. It sounds like it's that same tiger like thing that uh, greeted you at the very beginning. Can you roll me a 1d6, please? Yep. All right. Yes. Yep. It seems like some kind of magic is growing stronger and stronger in this trial. As if it's just, it reminds you almost like that water level rising in that first trial. There's some ticking oh. clock here, which you can't see. And if it gets to zero, it could be very bad for you. But for now, you can feel the time feel like it's just like spreading out and collapsing at the same time. And you feel very free. You get an extra turn. So you can take your full turn oh. and you get a bonus turn after that. What? Yeah, of course. I, I of course. Um, I, well, I, I want to I want to go ahead and get inside this machine and I want to shoot it directly at the force field that's right next to us. All right. So uh, you it you can see that as you touch it and kind of pull back the levers with your just newfound mental clarity, it just feels like this is a not even a challenge for you. You can yeah. pull it out and it kind of sits right in between that field. The field kind of exposes itself into a bubble, letting you step in to pilot this crossbow trebuchet type device. Unfortunately, it cannot fire against itself, but you can see it has a wide range of fire where you can shoot basically anything else in the map, but it won't be able to shoot the berries in particular. Well, I'm gonna just pop up on this guy right here, the one directly in front of me. I, I, how do I how do I select on the map? I don't know how to do that. Uh, you could just long click uh, on the map and. Oh, I see, I got it. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna pop off on him right there. Uh, just just get him real quick. Awesome. Go ahead and uh, just uh, in fact, let me actually roll that for you. So you're just gonna shoot at that thing right there. Perfect. I'm gonna shoot right at his ass. All right. Okay, well, it rolled a, it rolled a natural 20. Uh, so yeah, I know. 
I know. Fuck? I guess uh, even uh, I guess uh, I've eaten some of your luck today. So I will actually roll the amount of damage it does out in the open. Yeah. What the fuck? What the fuck, dude? Did I get him? Yo, we got a we got a UC. <laughs> you most UC. definitely got him. The it forms this like ethereal blade of energy. It's not even like a crossbow. It's almost like a sword. And you can hear kind of the clicking of a clock. Tick, 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 and it shoots forward. <clears throat> it goes right through that uh, that shadowy target figure and deals 27 damage, and it evaporates. It's completely gone. Wow. Okay, that's great. Can I use the weapon again? N on this turn, you can't, but remember, you have a bonus I have, turn. I have two turns. Yeah, I know. I have two turns. So I should be able to just use it again, right? I, I can use it a second time. Go and also, like, whenever I get inside of the weapon, can I get out of the weapon on the other side of the force field? It what? does not seem like you can, because it, it seems like when you actually need to step out, you can see that there's some gears inside that act as a collapsing mechanism. It'll put you back exactly where you got, but that is a very smart okay. idea. All right, all right, all right. Well, I think I'm just going to use the weapon again. I want to go and shoot another one. All right. Yeah, I think let's that's... pop off on another one. Perfect. Yo, uh, clear my path. Clear my path. What do you mean? Hit the hit the one behind the one you just shot. Okay, sure. Yeah, I got it. All right. I want to hit this one right here. All right. Yeah, let's hit that one. Perfect. That one actually hits as well. Yeah, of course. And we'll just uh, do this uh, for funsies. All right. Ooh. Oh, dang. wow. It seems like oh. these uh, these uh, these defenders are actually quite powerful as it hits it directly square on and it evaporates into the light one more time. You've actually successfully cleared a path for McConnell. Well done. Very sharp thinking. Ah. Still got to get through the gates of Babylon, though, bro. <laughs> Why would I go through there? No, McCon McConnell does. Is it? It's fine. Through. It's it's. I'll take some damage probably, but I won't have to deal with the fucking whatever the hell they did with Miz shit. I might just stay in the machine for now. Then yeah, that's the end of my turn. Yeah, I'm these good. things are, this, dude. These things I'm are good, overpowered. Dude. Perfect, Rich. It is your turn, and can you roll me a one d six as well? I roll 1d6. Oh, I'm yep. taking 1d6 of damage, aren't I? What if I just don't roll it? <laughs> All right, let me get, let me get to it. Uh, one sec. Okay, slash roll 1d6. All right. You can feel the same type of energy kind of coursing around you. And you can feel like things are starting to slow down a little bit. Unfortunately, you've lost a little bit of your action economy. You can still take a bonus action, but you have to choose between moving and attacking. It seems like the magic's starting to wrap around you and hold you down just for this turn. Okay. Um... Well, let me think. Fuck, dude, I think you're too big to get in the, in the weapons. I can't even, yeah, I can't even fit in these holes, man. Um, you will be able to jump into the portals if you'd like. Just barely. Oh, I can? Yes. Um, Don't forget about the construct, too. You know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to grab the construct with my hand. I'm going to say, I'm the boss of this gym. And I throw it on the ground and hit him with the people's elbow. So you're going to try to make a <laughs> melee attack against it. Why are you doing <laughs> Okay. I mean, uh, you can actually, you know, given its size different, go ahead and make an, a normal unarmed attack for me. Um, unarmed attack. Where the fuck is that? I've never done this before. Ah, Don't we've mess this up. Yeah, we've added it to your sheet. It's called Unarmed Strike. It's right below, right above your burning hands uh, macro in your character sheet. Ah, uh, yes. Oh. And that hits. Oh, brother. Let's do it. The elbow, baby. 
Yeah, don't worry about rolling your damage. Uh, you jump onto it, uh, and you can feel that at first you were really, you felt almost lopsided in this body, but now things are starting to click uh, really, really clearly for you. You're able to grapple it uh, like a wrestler, and as your elbow smashes into it, it disintegrates into dust. You successfully killed it. Wait, what the fuck are these things made of? It seems like they are rapidly producible constructs, it seems. Not very flimsy, but very fast. And you can still take a bonus action, which you can burn for a dash if you would like, as you can feel those red mushrooms forming within you. Ooh, you better you better use it before you lose it, dude. Uh, how far can I move? You'll be able to move up to 30 feet. Uh, can I make it into this far portal? Is that 30 feet away? Unfortunately not. You'll be able to get about like halfway there. Where'd this one go to again? My this memory. One. Yeah. This one, you remember, you've seen it twice actually. It comes out right over there and it spawns yeah, yeah. more constructs. Do we care about more constructs? Should I move up there? I, I uh, actually, you know what? I'm just going to move. We may as well go through this last portal, see what the fuck happens. So I'll yeah, move why not? Feet towards it. Yeah. Fuck it. Yeah. But I also, I want to, I want to like tumble there the whole time. Like, I don't ever want to get up. I just want to roll towards it. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. You get on the ground and you roll, feeling the cool floor uh, caress uh, whatever parts of your uh, body are outside of your armor. And you just roll forward about 30 feet, just about halfway there. Yep, that's uh, that's rock solid. And you're Am I wearing a shirt? You are not wearing a shirt, actually. You're right. Uh, you, took off, you did take off your shirt. Uh, yeah. And you're feeling, uh, you're just feeling really good and really cool right now. And it is Ms. Shit's turn. Why is Rich so big? <laughs> Man, if I had a nickel for every time. Uh, let's see. We got Ms. Shit over here. Yeah, you'd have a nickel. Yep. Give me a second. All right. We can... Oh, actually, you don't need to actually do that. Perfect, yeah. So, you can... Ms. Shit is kind of dodging uh, some of these blades that are coming at him, but ultimately he needs commands. Uh, he's kind of stuck in a, in a field of daggers rushing at him from a whole bunch of portals. Uh, what do you want Ms. Shit to do? Let him go like like move down one, two steps and then go as far as he can in McConnell's direction and yeah. kind of have him move with McConnell. Yep. Got it. Actually, so that... wait. Can he? I, I want him to get on McConnell's shoulder like a little shit in. Well, well, now you're pushing. Oh, no, that's, that's a little cute. Too far. Yeah. And, and, and then he and then he he uh he like he looks at uh he looks at McConnell uh... and he gets on his shoulder and he goes, "Yo, I'm live." <laughs> If McConnell let it sit, uh, then it shall, it, the shit sa shall sit, I guess. But uh, first, he needs to kind of step out of this uh, field of daggers and various other weapons and stuff being hurled at him. He's going to have to make an acrobatic save, which I'll make for you. He does not, and he takes, he takes another three damage, bringing him <gasps> down to five out of 10 HP, but he's successfully able to kind of get out uh, of that uh, of that field, and he does have enough movement because he is uh, he is uh, flying and floating uh, to make it to McConnell if McConnell would like him to perch or not. Just is he like dripping poop? Like, is it gonna get my armor dirty? Seems like it's a uh, fairly solidified, and, and based on what you've you've seen, uh, a rich pull a prank on Asm to make it look like he shat his pants, and uh, also you've seen uh, Mishit, you know, also touch a whole bunch of uh, uh, levers in that first trial. It seems like it's Rich's choice. <laughs> Richard, is it drippy? No. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. Uh, Misha is not getting on on me at all. He's gonna stand right next to me. Okay. Okay. He stands right next to you. He's real tiny. He barely even comes up to like a quarter of the way on your shin, and and and, and, and he's just like, yo, <laughs> sorry, <I'm> just <laughs> yo, <laughs> yo. Perfect. McConnell, it is your turn. Great. <laughs> and you're going to have to roll a 1d6 as well. Me? Oh, okay. No! Fuck! Not Ooh. bad, not bad. You can feel the time coursing around you as it starts to compress around you, getting faster and faster. You can feel that it just uh, disperses. 
it seems like no adverse effects oh. have happened to you this turn. You have a normal turn. And the path okay. has been cleared for you. What would you like to do? I would like to sprint as fast as I can right through it. Okay. As far okay. as I can. Perfect. So there are so you have the bonus action for a dash, but remember you can also use your normal action as a dash as well for triple movement speed. So first use your normal movement. You can move up to 30 feet. So let's get you to move that first. Okay. Uh yeah, there we go, right there. Okay. Do that. Alright, so now you're gonna burn your first dash. I'll assume that you're gonna use your bonus action first. And you yep. can move another 30 feet. Now. So are, are you gonna are you sprint right through uh the field? If I, the thing is like, how how fast are the weapons moving? If they're moving too fast, or if they're moving so fast that me sprinting doesn't matter, then, you know why why waste the why waste the extra sprint, right? So I guess I'm asking like, how fast are the weapons moving here? The weapons are sporadically shooting from one wall to another at a velocity that will definitely hurt if it hits. But it seems like if you're acrobatic enough. You may be able to dodge them. <laughs> there's no way I'm gonna be. There's no way, but I'll do it anyway. Fuck it. Okay. So as you start to dash through, every ten feet, just like you saw, Mishit was like trying to dodge and just got hit by a, a flying dagger as it like squirmed a little bit as it got through. Every ten feet, you're gonna have to make one. So go ahead and make an acrobatics check for me. Oh my God. Okay. Oh, I'm dead. It's over. Yeah. You're good, dude. You're oh, good. That's dead. an eight. That's, That's so good, no, dude. Oh, that was oh, the first damage. No. How much am I thinking? All right. Let's go take a look. You see one dagger like fly right past you, but another Warhammer just kind of glances and hits you off to the side, sending you kind of reeling a little bit, pushing you off your feet. You take four damage. God damn! You're literally losing to the least creative noble phantasm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no comment. I like, I like how he's losing the weeb shit. It's, just, it's, just actually, it's actually the weebs finally getting McConnell. What are you talking about? <laughs> Don't worry about it, McConnell. Just move another 10 feet and make another acrobatics check. You're doing great, dude. Come on, keep it up. That's great. Yeah, that's enough. To, that's enough to yeah, miss, right? Yeah, there you go. Unfortunately, Ooh. you Ooh. see another longsword fly right above you. Yeah, you jump over uh, another dagger. You tumble a little bit, but as you get back to your feet, another flaming energy type sword cuts into you and deals four damage. I might. I'm not gonna make it. You got it, man. Keep going, All man. All right, what another 10 feet. Here we go. Sure, sure thing. All right. Another acrobatics check. Oh, thank God. You can see long swords wishing past you. This time, you've got a very good rhythm going. You're able to just dance uh, right outside of these. Uh, right outside of these. And you right. make it safely to the other side, and you can still move. You can see right in front of you, there are two constructs. There are four portals, and a booming voice laughs and says, The time is ticking shorter and shorter. Can you make it out of this fast enough? As it laughs, and each of these doors start to wiggle a little bit. No! But nothing seems to be happening for now. You can still dash one more time. You have an action. Fuck. This might be a good time to use a potion because the constructs are going to... Are the constructs tumbling or are they, they standing there in front of me? They are currently standing there and they're eyeing, eyeing you. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, I'm out of the blades, right? They are... Uh, you are out of the blades and uh, you can see that they are definitely magical blades flying out there. Uh, it would be uh, uh, unwise to remain there um, until your next turn. Unless you, can, you want to tank another, you know, thing potentially, it's up to you. What if what if I get in the weapon right here? Can I can I get in the weapon and, and shoot the thing? Very smart. Yes, you can. Yes. You, you yeah. have you, you have an action left. Yes, I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll All do right. that. I'm you in the weapon. Use an action to get back in. You can see that it kind of uh, just wraps around you, 
gears clinking and you are fully embedded into this trebuchet thing just like uh Asmin is. good shit dude all right. all right very smart now the constructs immediately see this start to whir and flash red lights they rush at you darting around and they try to attack you oh. inside this very lightly shielded. First one tries to jump up. You can see it like open up its mouth, re revealing a very shrieking noise, uh, but it looks back and jumps off right before one of these uh, flying daggers nearly hits it. Its attack does not connect. Oh, and the other one. Come on, come on. Miss, you son of a bitch. The other one darts on the other side of you, gets really close and it jams one of its uh, blades no. into your armor, but you're able to Ooh. move it. You would have taken four damage, but these blades are not magical. That four damage oh. is reduced to only one. Oh, thank oh my God. Boys, I, I need help. You gotta, you gotta get up here. You gotta it's figure something okay. out. Okay, I'll hit him for you. Please. Jasmine, it is your turn. So should I shoot at McConnell? Or should I shoot at, I guess I should shoot at the enemies next to McConnell, right? That's what I'll do. I will shoot next to the. I will shoot at the enemies next to McConnell. Before you do, can you roll that one d six again? Yeah, absolutely. Uh oh, <laughs> this one d six shit is kind of worrying me. <laughs> it's fine. I'm gonna roll a six. It's not a big deal. That's not. It, it could be a one. Average. Average. Yep. Uh, no adverse effects. You still seem to be keeping this coursing time magic at bay. Go ahead and do whatever you would like. I, I, I take aim and I shoot right at this one, right next to McConnell. Wait, wait. So are these are two different types of mobs. Is there one that's bigger than the other one? They're both the same. They're both the same mob, just slightly different uh, model and trim. So they just look different. Okay, all right. Wait, I'm wait, wait, hold, hold on yeah. a second. Wait, 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 wait. Don't, don't shoot. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. Wait, just. I start aiming. Just, just uh, listen. Maybe you shoot the one on the left because if you, if you, listen, if you, if you roll, let's just say you roll a one. And it goes real south, you could hit me, dude, and I'll die. These things are powerful. So maybe maybe you hit the one on the left there. Duh. That's a 15. Are you shooting the one uh, that's right oh, behind the one right next to McConnell? The one right behind him. I, so, I ain't a pussy. All right. I'm not afraid. You let one coursing and flying out of McConnell, you can see that there's this bolt heading at you from the distance, this big, a scary bolt that you saw just obliterate some of the shadows. <laughs> Don't make me do an acrobatics check, dude. Don't do this to me. Don't do this to me, dude. You, you see it coming and you're like, oh, fuck, right? And you just instantly kind of react and kind of move it there, right? But you notice that these things are quite smart. It is using you as cover. Art. It, it seems like it would have hit you but it's able to duck out and it's basically using you it's obscuring you from attack so it has it's getting a bonus to its armor class because it's using you as cover the attack does not hit as it slams into the side of uh your construct you don't take any damage but you can feel that it kind of rattles uh, quite a bit and why didn't you listen to me why are you, you are you me, I, me? I, I said it fit. could go south and you could miss why do it's up north Dude, nobody fucking listens to me ever. I should. I, I to be a fifteen, man. You're supposed I, to understand that was what I'm a good roll. That was a good. You're lucky. Role. I. You're lucky. I didn't have to fucking break out the goddamn ninja moves and get out of the way. It could hit some, me. That's some bullshit. I hit him with a fifteen. That was a good shot. You should just dude. listen to me, man. Just fucking hit the one I'm telling you to hit. Uh, well, I mean, you know, it is the way. You know, sometimes things <sighs> go the way they go. You know, that's what they say. Sometimes it is what it is, and, and and that's all it is. So I didn't do I didn't do shit. Is that right, Riku? That is correct. Your attack was um your attack missed. So I did nothing. Okay. Um, that's the end of my turn. I'm done. My turn's over. Nice one. Thank you. All you right. You shouldn't have been there. If you if you were moved, I would have hit him. <laughs> Ridge, can you roll me a one d six, and then it will be your turn. Should done an athletics check. <laughs> Too afraid. Excellent. It seems like you two are able to keep the time energies at bay. Your turn is normal. 
Go ahead. I run through the portal. This the bottom one. This one right here. But, yeah, but just in case, I got my fist out like I'm like like kind of, I'm mid Supermaning that hoe as I run through, just in case some shit happens when I go on the other side. And I run through the last unknown portal with my fist already up in the air. All right. Uh, you just kind of just bear. Are, are you still rolling or are you like actually walking? Like, what are you doing? No, I take all that momentum from the roll and now I'm just up and my chest is just like barreling out and I'm just in my Superman stance. You! <laughs> you! <laughs> I run through the portal. <laughs> you, indeed, you run through the portal and you do show up right over here. And the moment you can do, you hear that you, to your, to your side, right by the, you can hear that statue and the one right across it, let out a burst of bubbles in a cone. Bubbles? Bubbles. Oh, shit! They start to just course around, each one making these weird, almost musical chimes as they course through the air. Luckily, no one was there uh, at, at this time, otherwise it seems like that would have been a very unfortunate trap that was triggered. But you notice, as they start to settle, the bubbles start to co coalesce and turn into these larger bubbles, which remain stationary and start to slowly drift. But it looks like no one took any damage this turn. The, tr the trap was triggered very safely. Nice. So there are just two bubbles there now. Yeah, two weird bubbles. And uh, that was your movement. You still have an action left. Oh. And remember, yeah. you can still dash with your red mushroom. Yeah, dash, 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 dash. Yeah, yeah, I want to dash. How far can I dash? Yeah, how, how far can I move? Ah, uh, yes, you can uh, move up to 30 feet uh, with your dash. And then and you are, the have to... are the bubbles touching the ground? The bubbles are barely touching the ground, yes. Oh, they are touching the ground. Fuck, I wanted to roll under them. Um. Okay. I will just run around the bubbles and go to where McConnell was. Perfect. So that he was right about here, so I think that'll be 10. Yeah, I think you can probably get right about here. Thank you and nice. you still have an action left. You can use it to dash, you can use it to attack, you can use it to dodge, you can do whatever you'd like with it. Oh, you can, you can dash again, dude. Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking, so basically I can dash or I can sit on the turret. The problem is, is we still don't know how to open this door. Which one? The, you see, there's one last door that we need to open. You see the top gateway? I'm working on it, dude. Well, you're going to be able to get there, but the thing that prompted the gate getting open last time was actually miss shit going through a portal. There is something that we haven't looked into, and it's these fucking... Blue these flame blue, things. Yeah, I, so I'm pretty sure that's... That or the, the... Like, whatever the thing is in the middle of those, the weapons opens the gate well let me let me check uh so since i'm right here can i actually can i check out these two uh the blue thing and the the circle thing riku on this portion of the gate yes go ahead and give me an arcana check please your thing this big is roll. so crucial dude yeah this it's is big don't mess this up man don't mess this up uh, what was that i can't see that is a uh, six it's, it's plus a six all the way to 12 because the blue mushrooms have given you a little bit of a boost just like it has given asthma now looking at this, yep this is uh this is you're definitely gonna get some information from this it's uh it seems like each of these fires have been placed here for a reason and around each of these main pillars you see that there is a glyph just like in the room before uh where you'd interacted with that uh, or as we interacted with that little pyramid at the start of the trial there's this script in a language uh, that you don't know what the language is, but you can definitely read the glyphs. It's as if you read it your entire life, but you just don't know what it is. And this one in particular has a message for you. What does it say? And the message reads, Trial of the present. The truth is always eternal. Anything that can change is not true. So that's something that you read for free. Now, so trial of the past, I'm sorry, not present. You were in the trial of the present before. Now, this fire uh, right in front of you, you can see that there's no fuel underneath it. It's being magically set up. Now, each of these fires looks slightly different. Each brazier has a slightly different pattern. You can't quite tell what it is, 
but it seems like each of these fires has something to do with the floors that they are on, and you could interact with it if you'd like to take the risk. Ooh. I, I, I pee on it. No! <laughs> I pee on the fire. Uh, All right. Oh my okay. god, Richard. You unzip your pants, and you let loose a stream of giant uh, 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 pee-pee on this magical flame. It sputters a little bit, and at first it seems like it's powering through the liquid, uh, n refusing to become extinguished, but uh, the fire does flicker away. And the moment it does, each of these doors starts to flicker. This one shrinks oh and is completely removed, as is the one behind you leaving only two doors remaining on this floor. It seems like this fire gave a hint that those two doors would lead into dangerous traps in the maze. That was a very clutch piss, if I may say so myself, Rich. Uh, I would like to not wash my hands. You, uh, that is certainly a choice you can make. Fine. It is Miss Shit's turn. Would you like to do something? I would like, uh, I would like for Miss Shit to go over to this fire. Yeah. And I would like him to just absolutely smother that flame with shit. So you will take one attack of and, opportunity. And also, I would like so Miss Shit opens his mouth, like Miss Shit opens his mouth, and just an ever nonstop flowing thing of shit comes out of Miss Shit's Wait, Miss Shit's not gonna die, is he? I, I, honestly, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sacrificing him? But, well, I, I, he'll dodge this attack of opportunity. I'm confident. And he's going to get to the fire, and Miss Shit just opens his mouth, and he's just like, Yah! and it's just nonstop shit flows out, and it smothers the flame. Oh, Jesus. All Is right. You can see Miss Shit uh, just starts to dart, uh, just, like, slides underneath uh, the... Uh, uh, the crossbow mechanism uh, that McC McConnell is piloting. The uh, whirring machines uh, look at it as it tries to track his moment. This one swings at it, but it's almost in slow motion. Uh, Misha just grazes a little bit of shit off by the blade, takes no damage, and is able to get up to the flame where it opens its mouth and glugs all over the shit, extinguishing it immediately. And similarly, you can see that these two doors up the top also start to fade away and disappear, but these armor suits start to rumble, and he can't quite see what's going to be happening there next. But McConnell, it is your turn. Uh, I would like to. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, fuck. It's like I want to hit the armor. I don't. I don't know if it would do anything though. Yeah, those armors just sprung up, right? That they have, they're quite, they just saw them rumbling, and McConnell can see this too. They're not moving quite yet, but there's something ominous about it. And whenever you take your turn, just remember to give me that 1d6. Nice. Oh, wow. All you right. guys are getting pretty, uh, pretty stable rolls. You can feel that the coursing magic is getting stronger and stronger and stronger, but yet it is not engulf engulfing you just yet. Your turn remains unaffected. Okay, I'll go ahead and I'll shoot the uh, armor up here to the left. That one rumbled, right? Yeah, that one. Yes, that one right here? Yeah. I'll go ahead and roll this one for you. Okay. Just in the interest of... Okay. Yeah, that will definitely hit, and it will roll its damage. I'll roll that out. Okay. Oh, Ooh. fuck. It could be worse. It could be a lot better, too. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. It arcs that over and embeds itself deep into uh, the suit of armor. The armor starts to crumple, and it seems like it's not going to be going anywhere uh, anywhere soon. And its sword drops to the ground. Oh, nice. OK. Good shit. All right. Dope. All right. Good so one's man. taken care of, boys. Uh, and then that, that's it, right? I can't do anything else. Yeah, I mean, you could, of course, uh, use your movement to get out of the uh, little trebuchet that you're in if you would like. Oh, you know what? I'd like to I'd like to uh, do what Rich did. Can I can I do that? Can I do an arcana check or is that an action? Uh, do you, uh, what are you trying to arcana check? 
Well, I'm trying to look at the the thing that he did. The the um, pillar. Yeah, the pillar. Ah, the one behind you. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead and make our contract uh, uh, for me, please. Okay. I'll know everything about this. Not too bad. All right. It could be worse. Yeah. Uh, you get the same amount of information uh, that Rich got in terms of what that uh, travel the past um, uh, was. And ultimately, uh, what you are noticing is that these these glyphs are wrapped around the same structure that has these turrets, these flames, and these barriers. And it seems like interacting with these and your innate curiosity is meant to find you the path through this maze. But jumping in recklessly may cost you quite a lot of damage, but it seems like you're starting to reduce a lot of options in the board uh, through your guys' actions. But eventually, it seems like you're going to have to take a risk, because after all, that glyph does say the truth is eternal. There is one solution. There's one. There's, there's, uh, yeah, I guess I'm not more, done. There's I mean, a few more pot fires we can put out, you know? Yep. Yeah, but the fu- the fucking fires are... The doors are linked to the fires, and you can only go through the doors if the fires are there, right? So if you just randomly go through them and then extinguish the fire, how are you supposed to get through the goddamn barrier? And how do you get the uh, how do you know, turn off the, the barrier? Fi- the fires are turning off. Are they're making some doors go away, which means that the yeah, doors they, that are left are the right doors. And then if you go through the right doors, the barrier is going to go away. No, what? Th- but there's multiple fires. It's, it's not every fire is linked to a trap. I'm sure. I'm sure no, some of the fires are linked to the good doors. So what if you extinguish no, the good no, no, doors no, and not. only leave the traps? Because the truth is eternal. It says that it, it says that the basically any door that will change is not right. So no matter what we do, we cannot fuck the good doors. Good For sure. Hole, yes, the good holes will stay open. I'm sure. That's what it said. It said uh, it, it, it basically said that, like if there's any change. Wait, no, 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 that, that can't be because Miss Shit, Miss Shit uh, did the thing on the fire and that caused the, the statues to rumble and they were going to attack probably. It caused the statues to rumble, but it also caused two, the two top doors to change. And when the two top doors change, then we know that those aren't the two doors that we would want to go through. So we know that we're, it's 50-50 between the two other doors. Now, because that fire didn't cause either the left one or the right one to change, that one of those is still wrong. One of those is still not the ideal path. Well, then- but as we put out more fires, we'll gain more information. Should we just put it, should we just put out all the fires? I, it, that is probably the safest course of action, yes. The thing is, though, is there's no guarantee that putting out all the fires is going to extinguish all the options. We still may need to, to risk a 50-50, but I'm really healthy, so I, I can risk 50-50s, you know? So well, it, there's it's going to be a fire... combination of putting out fires and risking 50-50s. The one fire down here I can't I can't put out unless Asmund hits the... Uh the thing that clears the path who you want me to hit i'll pop them off uh well the two the two fires that are below me are yeah. covered in the in the area which one you is see it? that is it the x's i don't know how to ping but it's like it's it's the the, like. the ligers that one and that and the one below it I fucking know what i i, I, I see speak? i see i see yep all right that's my turn also, also, Asmin, they're, they're, the fire really close to you, you could you could piss on. Now, the thing is, though, is as the fires go out, they we, we've extinguished we've extinguished a fire in each room. And when we extinguished a fire in each room, it only revealed information in that room. So it might not be an efficient use of your time. This is a guess, but Asmin, it might not be an efficient use of your time to put out the fire in your room because we already found the true path in that room. And I think that putting out that fire will only reveal information in the, the part of the trial that you're in. Yeah, fuck that. I want to shoot the one that's up near you guys. Yeah, why would I shoot the close yeah. one? I want to shoot the far one. Yeah. I don't, I don't, shooting the fire? You're going to shoot the fire? Is that what you want me to do? No, I want what, you to. Sh- well, what you want me? To I, shoot? I don't think shooting a, a bolt at a fire is going to do much. Like unless you're counting on the wind of the the bolt going through the fire. I mean, it, it could out. be going really fast. I guess that's a question I, you have I mean, to ask. Briefly. You know, that's a good way to look at it. <laughs> I definitely yeah. don't think shooting the flames uh, would uh, would do much. Okay, all right, fine. Is it even my turn yet? 
It is, uh, McConnell, whenever you end your turn, it will, it yeah, will yeah, be. Yeah, I'm, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, done? sorry. Yeah. All right, so okay, first... what was the door that I needed to take to get out? Oh, wait, oh, him? Uh, okay. Yes, we still have uh, two uh, two guys that are ready to attack. Yet. And they will swing right. into one of them. I will swing back into McConnell. No. Oh, McConnell, no. you want me to shoot over there? Ah, oh, he got me. Oh, help. Uh, Oof. Help. And this one does poke you for five damage, but remember, it is reduced down to two. Oh, oh, oh. Well, this last one looks at Mishit and attempts to make an attack. No, Ooh. don't you dare. Don't you dare. Ooh. Wait, Misha has no armor. Ooh. That's a natural armor, but unfortunately, it takes three damage, bringing it down to two wow. HP. Oh, God. Uh, you guys got to get up here. Misha was my only backup. Hasman, okay. it's going to be your turn. You roll that 1d6 again. All right, let's do it. Here we go. You can feel uh, this energy thrumming within you, and you start to feel sick. And you can feel the energy draining from you as you feel like you're going slower and slower and slower. But suddenly, there's a path opening up for you. And you can hear a voice echoing in your head. Health or wealth. Which will you forsake? Health. No, 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 never, you no. It. You feel a rumbling within you. And you can feel like your skin is almost like splitting apart. You what? grasp at it just reflexively. You take 12 damage. You dumb fuck. Oh God. Fuck, you're stupid, uh... man. But uh, he didn't even flinch. <laughs> oh, no. He literally was just like, "Kill me, dude!" <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I had no idea. I thought that's I wanted so, this stuff. Oh my god, that's so fucking NVL, man. Okay, but you get three turns back to back. Okay. All right. I get three turns. Okay, let's go ahead and let's do it. That's fine. We're in time dilation. What was the room that I had to go in to get to where McConnell was at? Which one was it, guys? McConnell, Rich, which one? Which room did I go through? Which door know. did I go through? Figure it out, dude. Okay. Yeah, maybe you can trade some of that wealth to find out. <laughs> uh, fuck. Uh, huh. Top, or, oh, oh, go through, go through, uh, bottom left. It was the bottom right. Oh, wait, no, 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 bottom left, bo or bottom right. No, it was right the after. bottom right. Yeah, 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 but that made the bubble trap go off. Yeah, but it's fine. They're just no, the bubbles. Bubble trap, just no, the bubble, y'all may flip a coin. The bubble trap will hit me. Trust me and go to the bottom right. No, the, the bubble okay. trap hit me. The okay, trap I'm going to the bottom right. right. Yep, I'm um, going to go to the bottom right. Go top right. No, go top right. Go top right. Uh, okay, okay, I'll go top right again. All right, that's fine. Um, all right, we'll go top right. I'm going to go through this one here. Nice, good okay, choice. Perfect. All right, so we will... So you're going to use... About 30 feet, you'll have to use your action to go in. All right, so you yeah. are jumping into that. As you get in, you can feel the darkness pulls you out and drops you right in the middle of the field where uh, Mishida had initially come out of. Yeah. The dags are flying by you, but it seems like uh, you're going to be able uh, uh, to uh, uh, to move. But first, you're going to have to give me an acrobatics check. That's the right play. Oh my you, god, you, dude! No, it's the right play. You got to dodge one fucking dude, act instead of shooting. All right, all right. No, it's track. every ten feet you got to do this. Check. Yeah, but but, but you look, like, you only have to walk five feet to be out next to me. I know, but you guys got to get through the goddamn the whole the whole field Ooh. again. You're going to take so much damn. You're going to take big damn. What uh, did I did I get it? You take another three damage, but you can uh, you can go ahead and take your turn, uh, your second of your three turns. Okay, all right. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna go to like right here. I'm gonna try to get out of this area. Yeah, am I able to escape without getting hit? Yeah, uh, that was your acrobatics track for that one actually. Thank that. God. Okay, Perfect. all right. Uh, I want to go over to here and 
Should I try to go through it, guys? What do you think? Yikes. Was that a turn? That was one of your turns to move over there. To, all the way up to here, he's able to dash. So I just counted the movement for you. Okay. Nice. I mean, I could I, I could just go. It's up to you. Keep in mind, okay? Not yeah. only now, not only do you have to get through the the fucking weapons, but yeah. there's gonna be two constructs waiting for you up here. I'd just kill them. Uh, you, I'm just you well, I'm warning you. If the bottom right or the bottom left door, one of them is right. If you want to take a risky 50-50, also you could put out the fire on the bottom and it might reveal the true door in the, the room that we're in. That is one of the other options. Wait, which door? Because he can't go to the bottom left. It's gone. You, uh, you see where in the, the, the segment that we're in? Oh, that one? Yeah, I get that. It's either, it's either bottom left or bottom right. One of them is the true door. Um, which could potentially even open up a gate. We're not 100% sure. So, um, you, you Why could I just put, use the crossbow. You can do anything you want. Oh, yeah, you the crossbow. Want. Yeah, I just, want. yeah, I want to get the on the crossbow. crossbow. And then for my action, for my second turn, can I attack this one right here? I want to attack this one right here next to McConnell. Yeah, so you started your turn over here. So we'll say that you moved. If you get into this one, you'll be able to use your second action attack. How about that? Okay, yeah, that's fine with me. Yeah, I'll, I'll go Perfect. to that one. That's no big deal. Nice. All right, so for your second attack, you can go ahead and... Yeah. Uh, which one are you choosing? Okay, uh, I, I... Wait, what do you mean? Like, I thought I just... Oh, oh yeah, that, that one. Is that the guy you want to shoot? Perfect. Yeah, the one with the bigger head. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I will roll for you. Let's go. Come yeah, on. Def <laughs> definitely hits. All right. right. 20? And um, yeah, this is uh, I'm not even going to need to roll damage for this one uh, because this arrow minimum damage is going to be enough to destroy this. Uh, it <laughs> it just hits it and this thing just explodes into dust and gears. <laughs> uh, yep. This thing is uh, no longer threatening a McConnell and it is now your third turn. Okay. Um, Holy for shit, my third... you destroyed it, dude. Holy he didn't even God. bother rolling the damn. Should <laughs> I try to destroy the other one next to you, McConnell? Uh, Listen. Here's what I'll do, okay? Go ahead and shoot it. And if it tries to take if it tries to take cover, I'll do it I'll do a check. Okay. All right. Uh, I get on the other one. I'm going to get over to the other one just so I have a you know, I can I can go over there instead. And so I'm closer to like the pathway and I get back in the uh, uh ballista or whatever it is crossbow and I take aim at the one right next to McConnell and I try to shoot it again. All right, here we go. Yep, here we go. Oof. What was it? What was it? What was it? Don't you... say oof. Stop saying oof, bro. Oh. <laughs> Stop saying that, man. You can, you can, as you're kind of rushing in, you can feel like this burst of speed is starting to wear down from those three mm. sudden turns. Your aim is a little bit off and it just goes creeping, but this time it doesn't just uh, bean McConnell. Uh, you're trying to avoid hitting your friend. Uh, it slams into the gears. The thing rumbles again, and it seems like it's only one step uh, from being uh, from being broken. Uh, but McConnell is still safe. Okay. All right. That all was right, a one about, that's all those were all my turns. I'm good. That's a, a rock solid usage. Rich, roll one d6, and it will be your turn. Come on! Come on! Mm. No! All right, it's slowing you down yet again. You have to choose between moving and taking an action. But you do have that bonus to take a dash if you would like. Well, I, I, I choose between moving or taking an action. But you all, you can still take bonus actions this turn. Is pissing a, an action or a bonus action? Well, it's, it's just an action. God. So I oh can't pee God. this turn. You could use your bonus attachment no, if you want fine. to. Pee on this you know one. what? You know what? You know what? I'm so f I'm, I'm a biggest fuck boy. I'm the biggest boy anyone's ever fucking seen. I'm such a big boy. I don't even need to take an action. I'm gonna walk over the flame, and it's gonna put it out. I'm I, in my movement. I am going to walk over the flame, and it's just gonna put it the fuck out. So oh, you're attempting oh, to oh. smother this flame, or yeah, uh, the one above you. Which one? I walk all over it like women walk all over me, just like this. <laughs> all right, you throw yourself against, against it and you can feel uh, the blue frames are like, singeing and digging into you and you will take 
You'll take two damage. Uh, it seems like uh, quite lucky on that one. Thank but you you're able to uh, put it And actually, you have two damage down to one because you are a tiefling and uh, you have resistance to fire. So you can use your body to actually face tank these. So you smother this flame and all of them start to go out in this room. And this one fades into nothingness, leaving only one door open. I, and I still got a decent amount of movement left too, right? You did, uh, you're right here, 5, 10, 15, 20. Yeah, I can move about 10 feet. And then I can bonus move, right? Yes, that is correct. So you can then, you can jump through that door, yeah. Yep, I'm moving on through. All Let's right. Let's go. You roll in and it lets you out right here. Yep. It, I, it actually, I, I wanted to double check just to make sure that the constructs, because when I put the uh, the arrow through, it didn't treat it like organic life. So I wasn't 100% sure if there could be some sort of confluence or, or anything like that with the uh, these mechs, but the mech actually did roll through this door and end up here. So I did know that, but also now we know if we put out all the flames in a room, we do get full information and we don't have to risk stuff. So well, I'm gonna try to put out that flame as well, but that that's my turn, right? That is your turn at the end of your turn. Uh, so this will take effect later. You can see that there's some dark energy emanating from this door right as you pass through it. It reaches around you in a dark embrace, and it feels warm. The oppressive energy that's starting to build and flood this chamber seems to let go for a brief moments. From now on, you're going to have double turns. Starting your next round, you've discovered a secret about this door. And I run out of pee in this universe. Your bladder is much bigger uh, than it was uh, now because you've all you've you've gotten you've gotten bigger. Uh, so I think you have plenty uh, for this encounter to probably extinguish. I'd say two more flames. Nice. Yeah, it seems about right. Okay. All right, mission. It. it is it's going to be mission's turn. Uh, it's crazy that I pee more in this universe than I do in the real world. Usually, it's every twenty-two minutes for me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, Miss Shit. Let's see what you got, brother. Um, can uh, he can make it to the other flame, right? He can easily make it to the other flame. Yes. Yeah. Let's uh, let's have him go up to the other flame. All and, right. Uh, so yeah. he's gonna move to it and use an action to try to smudge it. Uh, smother yep. it. Yep. Yep. All right. He moves over, and he's gonna use his full action to try to disarm this flame. Now, remember, you walked over it and just put your body over it. But he didn't take damage that first time because he finds this mechanism to clog uh, with his shit as he just kind of just jumps over it. And sure enough, the door behind you closes, leaving only one left. One true door. <laughs> All right. Does Ms. Can Miz move yeah. again? Uh, unfortunately not. Uh, he only gets uh, one action. All right. McConnell, it's your turn. If I move, it's going to get an attack of opportunity, right? Uh, if you leave its threat range, that is correct. Shit. Well, just in the interest of getting rid of a threat, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to just, just, I'm going to shoot the thing yeah. at it. Oh, shit. Okay. You're going to shoot the thing at it. Now, remember, at oh. close range, range attacks will be made at disadvantage. And there's also that slash roll 1d6 you're going to need to do for me. Oh, Perfect. fuck! There you go. Oh. You can feel it. Uh, you can feel it starting to compress you. You'll have to choose between moving and action. But remember, you still have your bonus action. You ate that red mushroom. You could use it to dash. Oh, I don't get the health or wealth option, huh? Yep. Unfortunately, not I with the two. I rolled a one. You rolled a two. You just get to get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what are my options again? Sorry. Yes. Yeah, so you can choose between movement or action, only one, but you have a bonus action, which you can use to dash because that red mushroom while it lasts. I choose action. I, I want to get rid of this thing. Gotcha. So if you make a ranged attack, uh, you're going to be making it a disadvantage, but this is wide enough for you to attack using your blade. You could make a great sword attack against it if you would like, just from exactly where you stand. 
Okay, I'll do the great sword actually. Fuck it. All right. I'm not. Yes. I'm not a ranged attack guy. I'm. I'm fucking great sword. Let's do this. Go ahead and roll great sword attack for me. Boom! Huge. Fuck. Massive, dude. That's crazy. Ah. That's a you know hit, what? right, Riku? You know, Rich, you, you know gotta. What? You gotta help me kill it. You know what? I use what the up, inspiration. No, no! no, do not, dude. Do not under any circumstance. That's a, that's a, that's a, you pull that out when the, uh, things are the most dire. It's pretty I, dire. I mean, like you're, you look, don't think it's, it's dire? I'm, no, I'm going to miss. It's going to attack me for, you know, fucking five damage. Then Rich is going to get his turn and he's going to get to kill it. It's not a big deal. Five Before damage. You're, you're going to die. I'm not going to I've got 17 plus. I've got potions, man. All right. I won't use it. I just, I, the only reason that I even almost use it is just because I care. All right. I end my turn. All right. You're going to end your turn after that attack. Gotcha. Wait, it, did, it didn't hit, right? Uh, it did not hit. Uh, unfortunately, not enough maneuvering space, it seems. Oh, my God, dude. But it swings, or actually, it does not. What? It takes, a, it takes a look at the situation, sees this big guy right next to him, and you still in the area. And it seems that familiar uh, right over there. It thinks itself to a small woman and it just moves right here and starts to beep red, taking one more step. Would you like to take an attack of opportunity? Oh, uh, yes. All right, just roll your great sword attack. Okay. Boom! Are you? Yes, there Ooh. we go. Eight plus five to thirteen, unfortunately, does not hit. What? It's a thirteen. What? It's a thirteen. <laughs> they have low health but high armor. Uh, as it takes a step forward, you see it beeping. It gets louder and louder and louder as it beeps, and it explodes. Ooh. Are you shitting me? How much does it kill McConnell? Take no. How much damage no. It does. You take seven fire damage. Yeeted and Eight. deleted. And you can give me an acrobatic or a deck save if you'd like. Me? Uh, oh, Rich, I'm sorry. Plus fire immunity. Exactly. You save. Um, that gets reduced down to three, down to one damage. I'm chugging a pot. Wait, didn't I kill something recently, by the way? I killed uh, I killed one of the uh, I killed one of the constructs. Oh, with your elbow. Uh, yeah. uh, plus, yes, you do. So that was plus four temporary health points, so I should be down to plus three temp, temp health points, right? Thank you for letting, uh, for reminding me. Yes, you are three temporary hit points. I just went oh. up three health. That robe, I can suck my dick. <laughs> Asmin, it's on you. You're, have to, you're gonna have to roll a one d6 as well. All right, let's see it. Let me go ahead and roll this off. It'll be easy. I'm gonna roll a six. Why don't, roll you, one why don't you choose six. health again this time? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't need to. I got a perfect roll. No adverse effects. You can take your turn as That's normal. That's right. Okay, can I go through the door to go to where, where Rich is? Or so stuck? you notice something. This door over here, which is the last one remaining, yeah, led to this one, which is now destroyed. Which means <sighs> there are no more doors left on your floor. Oh, you gotta go through the knives. The yeah. only way to get through this is through the knives. <laughs> but remember, you, while well, you only have, I mean, not only, you have 19 health, it's just still a lot. You could, you remember, you took the aspect of the bear when you leveled up, which means if you rage, you can have all damage coming at you. You're in a pickle. What do you want to do? How many turns do I have rage? You'll have it for 10, ten rounds. Uh, for 10 turns, as long as you get plinked and take damage or attack something. Yep, let's rage. I'm going to pop rage. I'm going to go through it. All right, here we go. Rage! Big dick, big dick, let's go. 
here we go. So let's move you 10 feet up first and then give me yep. an acrobatics. Okay. All right. First one. All right. And roll this off. It's going to be no problem. Literally no problem. Easiest roll of my... How much do I... How much? Yikes. Are you supposed to take that five? Five damage? You, you would have taken four damage, but it's reduced to two. Okay. All right. Not bad. Uh, I want right. to move again. Another 10 feet forward? Yep. Yep. Give absolutely. Me acrobatic check. Okay. All right. Uh, here we go. Rolling again. This is going to be... Okay. Nice. That's good, right? Not that bad. Nine plus two to eleven. You're still going to take some damage to the face, but it is three reduced to one damage divided by Not two. Not bad at all, dude. Yes, dude. Okay. All right. One more, right? Ten more feet to go. That's it. Yep. All right. I want to go again. All right. Here we go. Move ten feet. Give me another acrobatics check. Okay. This is gonna be a. This is where I get a good roll. Yes. All right, how much? Four reduced to two. Okay. Okay. And that was your movement. You still have an action. Uh, you could attack. You can also use it to dash again if you'd like to move forward. Uh, I think I should just dash just to get the fuck out of here. Hell yeah. Yeah, I want to move to like right here. Uh, do I have to do another acrobatics check? Nope, you are clear of the field. So that right. is... Three more. Right. You have 15 more movement left. 15? Okay, I'm going to move up to you. No, don't uh, don't get too close to the armor. By the way, why? Why I just kill it? Because it's it's pissed off. I just kill it. The one on the right. I'm gonna I'm gonna probably shoot it. Okay, that's fine with me. Yeah, yeah I, I'm yo, just gonna stand there. I'll end my turn. I'm good to go. Yo, yo, when you get through all the daggers, Asmin. Yeah. You should you should like you should get down on the ground and like kind of like as your blood's dripping, you should go atone for my sins. I have no sins to atone for, nor have I forced such a meaningless concept on anyone. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Do it. Dude, just do it. Right, yeah. What do you do? You do you <laughs> you gotta, you, you, right when you get out, you just gotta get down on the ground, bro. Okay. <laughs> Put him in bridge. It is, it is your turn unless Asmin actually wants to perform that. I'm, I'm good. I'm good for now. I, I'll, okay. I'll save that for now. <laughs> so Rich, you no longer have to roll two, uh, two, uh, the DXs. You have double turns for free because of that magical effect that you triggered. You can go ahead and move. There's only one door left remaining on this floor. I, uh, so I, 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 uh, I run to the, the other door. And as, a, as I do, I like, I, I'm going to finger pistol at both Asmund and McConnell. Like as I run by them, I'm going to be like, and then just run on through. And when I get through, I just dive in. Yep. So your movement and your dash will get you up to here, and action for another dash will indeed get you to the door. What do they do when I finger pistol at them? And get to ask them. Also, 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 I go, I go, a. I, uh, good. I'm gonna do a, uh, like, a, I'm gonna wave my hand, like I'm saying, no, don't go through there, don't do it. You could close the door. You I might close the door on us. I, re I, I realize what McConnell says, but I'm just a fast as fuck boy. I'm already going through the door by the time it hits me. I, I go through with the warning of McConnell fresh in my head. You leap into the door and you disappear. And yeah. the door starts to shrink behind you until it is gone. But you reappear in the belly of the statue as it opens up. And you crawl out. While this door has disappeared, the statue starts to glow. And a voice emanates through the room. Well done. One last check remains. All right. You turn to it, and you can see that there is this glowing mechanism in that light. Can you give me a strength check with advantage because you are giant. Oh shit! Let's go! Let's do it, dude. Come on. Do it up! Ooh, that's decent. Oh. That's decent. 10 plus Could 11. Be a lot worse. Just. Oof. So as I you start to make dice. You're... <laughs> All right, we'll take a nat 20 on that. At first, you can feel yourself starting to struggle against it as the statue starts to laugh at you. You can see that each of these doors around you start to 
peel off from the walls one at a time and start slowly walking towards you as it's locked in place. But with a burst of inspiration, seeing the door start to walk towards you menacingly, you crank it open and a portal opens in the statue. You can feel yourself getting lighter and lighter. And as in a rich, you also start to raise into the air as if you're floating away. And you guys get sucked for the portal as the doors let out a screech as they start to walk towards you. And Wait. all three of you seem to have passed this trial. <gasps> yeah! There Let's it go, is. Rich! Boys. There it is. All right. So, as you guys get sucked in, you can see that the lights are opening up like a kaleidoscope all around you. There's stars swirling around you, some counterclockwise, some clockwise. And in front of you, there's another room that seems to be opening forth, getting closer and closer. You guys fall out to the floor. And before you, you see what seems to be the lord of this manor. Oh. Oh. Oh my god. Bruh. What the fuck? Oh. What is that? It's a chimera. It's a... It's a celestial dragon. I would ask, what manner of creature are you? You ask it. The first thing, as you kind of get out, before it has a chance to speak or anything, yo, what are you? And it laughs and rumbles at the same time saying, I, I am a creature as old as time itself. Some called me a beast. Some called me a seraphim. But others call me a sphinx. It takes a step forward through you as its wings unfurl. It's got one set of wings behind it and another four, just for a total of four wings. Each step seems to cause the ground to ripple underneath it and it's emanating this deep pulsing time energy that you guys felt was messing with your turns. As it takes a step forward towards you, it begins to speak. You've done well for both of my trials. In fact, I've been watching you. I created both of these trials just for you. But that was the trial of the past and then the trial of the present. But of course, the best things come in threes, don't they? No. Oh. What do you think is the trial of the future? Do I still have 16 int, or am I back to minus one? You're still at 16 int. I'd say it's a trial of the future. But not. Indeed, Barbarian. This is the trial of the future. I am the trial of the future. Because I will decide your fate. I, Does that seem like... Yep, go ahead. So I say to him... Um... The future is a concept. It doesn't exist. There is no such thing as tomorrow. There never will be because time is always now. That's one of the things we discover when we stop talking to ourselves and stop thinking. We find there is only present, only an eternal now. It's Bow good. before me, bitch ass cat. That's good. That's good. Keep going. Wait, don't, the, don't say that last word. You don't see, say that last word. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't say that last word. Okay. Don't say that. All right. All right. Okay. I mean, is he going to say the last part? It's up to him. Don't, don't say the last part. I don't say the last part. <laughs> <laughs> he glints at you menacingly while laughing and says, Ah, you may have much to say. This thing is massive. It's like, it's like 15 by 15 by 15. This thing is huge. But the future always flows from the past like a river from the mountains to its inevitable destination in the ocean. Your future is as much held hostage by your current actions as it is every action you've taken in the past. And let it be known, this is not a trial by combat or a trial of curiosity. This is a trial like a court and believe me your memories have much to testify 
What? 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 I'm innocent. I didn't We're do on it. Trial, dude. I did. I didn't do it. I'm. He, he laughs. Barbarian, you said you did not do it. I didn't do it. Nope. You didn't do it. No. You didn't do anything at all. Well, I did. I did all all the things that were good that you think I did. I did those. All the things that are bad you think I did. I didn't do any of those. Look, 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 Asmin. I've been watching a lot of paternity court. Uh -huh. Just let the, let this pussy keep talking. Can it bury its own grave? Dig it its can own hear grave. you. <laughs> He's like an ancient okay. being. He's hearing this. Okay. All right. That's right, Tom. He chuckles. Nothing wrong. Now, of course, you've done a lot of looting from your memories. I can see not telling anyone even in the middle of combat when you could be helping your allies. But I am a sphinx. Rumor has it that I guard loot beyond measure. And of course, I love loot. I also love violence. I'll never fault you for looting or fighting your foes. But can you honestly tell me that you've never hurt this very party that you travel with, with your axe? In fact, observe this memory. I swing and I hit where are the spiders going? Are getting close for me. I hit it, and as I s take this shit out of the sword, or the axe, sorry, it swings and it flies onto Rich because it's in that general direction. And it's like I'm painting a Jackson Pollock with Miz shit all over his fucking forehead. So I take it you're not a fan of fine art. <laughs> He, glance, he just points around with his wings to the various statues, each one very, just gorgeous with all kinds of intricate symmetries and asymmetries and things. I quite love art. And honestly, I find that much more hilarious than you. But why would you do this? Not only was this creature summoned by your warlock ally, it even regarded you as a friend. So why did you paint a picture with him? He's a piece of shit. <gasps> you can call it whatever you want. You can say it's your friend, but you can't be friends with a piece of shit. How does that work? How, how, how can you be friends with a, with a turd, man? Think about that. It's got no feelings of its own. It's just a poop. That's it. It does, it does have feelings, too. This dude. Oh god! He takes a step towards you. Yeah. It doesn't seem like it's super menacing at all. And yeah. it chuckles. This poop does not have feelings. But don't you think your fine warlock friend had feelings as well? Oh. Especially as this little poop, as you said, glanced at you for acceptance right before your axe cut through it. And the very next two hours, when you were in that dark swamp, did you not think for a second that the reason why the Warlock made so much concessions in his life for the dark arts was to be able to summon familiars to help his friends not take danger so that his familiar could do that for you? Did you not think about how he would feel? Oftentimes people do things disguised as, uh, you know, altruism, and they're actually selfish acts. This was not to help me. This was not to help McConnell. This was to help himself. He was unhappy because the barmaids kept turning him down. And he simply summoned this thing because he was lonely and bored. I will not be patronized by, t by being told, and I still have 16 in, right? You still have 16 in, that's cool. I, I will not be patronized by being told that I destroyed something that should have never existed. Oh if you God. make friends with a rock, that doesn't mean that you should do that. If you talk to a tree, it doesn't mean the tree is your friend. Just because you do something does not necessarily mean that it's what must be done. In doing this, and in the feigned altruism, he was only trying to seek something that he should not have been looking for. Crouches down a little bit, kind of getting at eye level. He says, those are bold and very big words. When that very friend stands next to you and is also looking quite big. Warlock, do you buy his explanation? 
rich. It's up to you. I turn to Asmin. <laughs> I look him in the eyes. And I say, we've shared a many a bed together. We have. Is there anything you want to tell me? <laughs> About what? Is there any secret that you've ever kept from me? There are a lot of secrets. I always keep secrets with everyone. You'd have to be more specific. One night, I found myself lost in a pool of, I don't know what. It seemed that you were sweating through the night, maybe, maybe in a bad dream. Maybe you had been overtaken by fears of our journey. Mm -hmm. But before I talk to the Sphinx, I want to know, on that night, what happened in that bed? Truth is that there's been a lot of beds, there's been a lot of nights. And what happened on that bed, on that night, it's probably just business as usual. It is what it is. Do, do I know? It is what it is. It is, it what is, it is. indeed what it is. And I think we can show what it was. After all, the truth is eternal. Observe this memory. And since Rich isn't there, uh, I'm going to jerk off on his side of the bed. And then I'll roll over back over to my side of the bed and I'll fall asleep. What the fuck is wrong with you, man? You can't own a bed. It wasn't either one of our beds. It was the, uh, it was the end's bed. So if you're angry at me for coming on somebody else's bed, you don't even own that bed. This is just another way that you're trying to expand your influence beyond what you control, what you should have. Like first you're trying to summon a poop demon to be your friend, and now you're trying to blame me for coming on a bed that neither of us owned. Just because you happen to sleep on it doesn't necessarily mean that's my fault. Man, I, I had no idea. I would have told you. Man. Jeez, please. With that logic, next thing you're going to do is buy a $3 million house. I don't know what the fuck that logic was, but uh, I turn to I turn to the Sphinx and I say, I say, my friend's words are true. What? On this journey, I summoned me shit. Not for them. Not for the people he might save. Not for the content, and not for all of the inevitable threads Mischief would create, no. I summoned Mischief for me. I am a lonely man, and I was searching for something that it has eluded me in this realm of reality. Yes, my friend was right about that. But, I told you. but, he shall face one day by my hands a storm so strong and so much wetter than that which he has deluged upon me but that fate that is a fate that i will carry out with my hands you you have no business here <laughs> we're in his temple <laughs> he chuckles and he turns to the barbarian and says, is there anything you would like to say in response? Now, Asmin, you're going to start off at that 16 int, but you can notice that the effects of the mushrooms are starting to wear off. Oh. It's been a while. You're going to be going to, you're going to be going back to where you were normally, right in the middle of the statement. But you can, <laughs> you can respond uh, to Rich's uh, not so veiled threat if you would like. Yeah, what do you well, gotta say? What do you gotta say, bitch? um, basically, what I was thinking was, uh, I knew I was right, and I never do anything, uh, unless it's to help 
uh, other people and um, I was trying to, I've always been, whenever I take people's gold, it's to help them so they don't, uh, so, so, wait, wait a minute, so, okay, just give me a, so they don't, uh, you don't have to basically, um, I'm helping them. Fuck, man, are you okay? What's going on? What do you mean? Flowers for Are you fun. good? I'm what fine. the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> I'm fine. Why would I? Why would I not be fine? I got a bunch of stuff. I mean, you're you're fucking rambling like a goddamn. You know, guy. here's an interesting thing: is I've actually done more to prevent the earthly desires than McConnell has as a paladin, because every time I steal people's stuff, then they can't get greedy steal. about it. Well, no, no, I mean, it's, steal, steal. No, 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 no it, 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 it's just, it's a metaphor. It, I, I didn't mean that no, word. No, steal's a word. That's no, not no, a metaphor. No, I just, I was thinking of another word. No, I was, I'm not, not going to judge you. I'm not here to judge. So I know. You know I, I'm, I'm just saying quiet. I'm actually more of a paladin than you are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because I'm taking, uh, I'm taking these earthly desires away from them. And they don't have to have them anymore. You have no idea what you're talking about, do you? I I did the right thing. The Sphinx laughs in the background mm -hmm. and just glances at what's happening in front of him and says, Barbarian, yes. your skull is as thick as diamond. <laughs> Thank you. Takes one I step towards you. Oh. And looks you directly in the eye and says, I like it. What? what? Thank you. Oh, I step back and glances at the warlock who is shrinking as the mental effects and the physical effects are starting to wear off. And he says, and you, I'm quite impressed that you would admit in this court that you did it for yourself. And of course, from all your memories, I can see there is no shortage of bunkum and balderdash from you. But while this chaos is your strength, have you ever stopped to consider if your recklessness has gone too far? Observe this memory. And I act like I'm just trying to get up and I stab the dead guy that's like right under me with the butt plug and like use it to prop myself up and get up. Oh, yikes. <laughs> Warlock, you knew that the paladin would not like this. You also knew that you may be dabbling with powers outside of your control. So why did you take this risk? As you speak of past flowing into the sea of the future, Moments of time rippling out. Each droplet, connections unknown. I ask you to turn your eyes to our headless friend Timmy, who led us straight here to your temple. You mean your headless friend that you left behind? <gasps> That's true. Did. Hey guys, where do we leave Timmy? I mean, he's in the him? first. He's in the first section, where, where right we, next to the fire. We didn't do anything. Oh, with him. that's too far him. away. Yeah, I guess he. Uh, yeah. I, look, I didn't know, uh, Catman. I genuinely didn't know when I went. I thought that all of the doors would open, but we just disappeared, and you brought it. Could you actually bring Timmy here? We'd appreciate it a whole bunch. Would you like to call forth a Timmy as a witness? Certainly. Yeah. I think we could do that. And you can see lights start to form uh, above you. And his legs just first drop down, then his arms, then his shoulders, and then his non-existent head. And he appears uh, in front of you. Timmy! What will Timmy say in your defense? I, I, uh, it, do I have the ability to pull the, the, the magic plug out of him with my... Uh, <laughs> Magic oh, and, 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 and uh, you said he doesn't have his head, right? 
He does not have a head. If he doesn't say anything, that means we did everything right. Uh, uh, si silence is consent, right? That was Thomas Aquinas when he was on trial. Oof. <laughs> Mega yikes. Uh, but, no, 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 uh, that, that, sounds, that sounds bad out of context. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. That's, that's <laughs> You're being problematic, No, that's literally from Thomas Aquinas. I, that, that, that's a quote. That's a quote. <laughs> It's only in court. <laughs> yeah, uh, Timmy uh, stands there um, uh, providing his heartfelt testimony of some small sputtering uh, through his uh, trachea, uh, which is all that remains of his like windpipe. Uh, a little bit sputtering, uh, but does not seem to say much in your defense or against you. But the Sphinx looks back at you and says... You planted the spike in this fellow. This fellow that probably had a family and everything. But I am a very old beast. I don't care much to be honest for many people's family. But what I'm more curious about is that you knew that spike had power. When you ate that gem, when you ate that demonic essence, you took risks against something that you knew was powerful. You knew here that the undead were dangerous. You knew that there was some foul plot involving them. Don't you think your curiosity has gone too far? Yes, yes, it has. It has gone too far. The most stable object is one which stands on three legs. As I look at my party, I see strength, I see curiosity, and I see order. For me to act in any other way would be a disservice to my two brothers that stand beside me. We're not brothers. Just act like we're cool, dude. We're cool, but we're not brothers. We're not brothers. We're not related. I'm not related to either of you. you know, just be silent. Okay, I'm silent. As you give your testimony, I can see Timmy just walking forward, just bumps into the Sphinx's leg, just gets just pushed back, falls to his uh, back, uh, gets back up again, and just uh, walks back into him, and just pops back to the ground. And he says, "Curiosity, you say, is a strength, but did you not think, or have you not even realized?" That you've led the Dawn Reaver to my home. What? 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 Who? 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 Wait, what the fuck? Wait. That he what? just gently takes his paw, uh, almost like a uh, like a mother cat with a kitten, and just pushes Timmy off to the side. He's a step forward to you, blocking Timmy from going and hurting himself with his, its wings, kind of cradling uh, this witness, and says, So you did not know. Let this be a lesson that sometimes curiosity can kill a lot more than cats. <gasps> but you will find out in due time. But... Is there any question that you would like to ask me if you truly believe that curiosity is your strength? Who's the Dawn Reaver? No, not you, Rich gets to ask. Turns oh. to you and says, oh. says, We'll get to questions to you later, maybe. You have passed your part of the trial. Perhaps. Shit! And glances back at Rich. Who is the Dawn Reaver? <laughs> It chuckles. He says, all that talk of curiosity, all of this around you, like spreading the other wings that are not cradling Timmy, all this around you. And the most curious question that you could have come up with was, who is the Dawn Reaver? Well, I am nothing, and I stand no platform on no platform to be curious if I do not have my friends. What my friend asks is what I ask, because our goals are aligned, and together we will save this world. 
Give me a persuasion check with advantage, please. Oh, wow. Nicely done, dude. <laughs> a one and a 20 on advantage. That is a picture perfect wow. right there. Wow. He, uh, he leans forward to you and says, so you're saying that curiosity was not your strength, but the real strength was the friends you made along the way. Oh my, are you, are you effing serious? I, uh, yeah, uh, I, uh, hmm. repeat it once for me, loud and clear, so I may hear it. Yeah, um, I, I don't want to conquer anything. <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the true strength is? The friends I made along the way. It's hey, just, let's... <laughs> it's let's... just that the person with the most freedom on the sea. <laughs> Is the pirate king? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? The Sphinx lets out a bellowing laugh and says, He said it! He said the line. He said it. He said a lot of things, and Paladin, you have said a lot of things. Oh shit. In fact, you were arguing with the barbarian just now. And I think anyone would say that you've done quite a lot to keep this party in order, just as your uh, friend has said. You are the pillar of order that. in this party. Yes. But, I try to be. <clears throat> but I don't think you are free from reproach, Paladin. No. That's true. Some say people show their true colors at their weakest, but sometimes they show their true colors when they are at their strongest. Observe oh. this oh. memory. Yeah, so hey, here's what's gonna happen, you. Asmund. You're gonna give Rich the stone and the thing you just got, and you're gonna give me that big fucking sack that you got on uh, on your back there. Oh, and, uh, we're gonna look through that real quick while you're, while you're recovering from your clear injuries, because obviously you'd be far too weak to challenge me in the state you are right now. Now, before you say anything, I know you've done a lot of great things for your party, as they've even both testified on your behalf. You are a pillar of order. But how was that different from thuggery? Well, the difference is I did it in order to help the party, because if I hadn't done that, there is no chance in hell. And you already know this that those goods would have been distributed to the rest of the party. And because I did that, other people were able to help themselves in their time of need. And if they hadn't done, if I hadn't done that, they wouldn't have been able to. Well, it was my stuff though. It was all of our stuff, it comrade. Was, it was your stuff, then why was it in my bag? You took the bag when nobody was looking. So That's the problem. Bag. You took the bag and you had no, you didn't want to share it with anybody. You wanted to keep it all for yourself, even what? though it could help everybody else. Well, it could help everybody else or it could help me. And then I could help everybody else. You already else. help yourself enough. I, You're already I rushing headlong into it's, into danger. That, I, I, that's, why, that's why, why are we, I need all the are you doing this in front that's, of the God cat? That's why I need to do like, oh, I just want the God cat to know that I've done everything right and I haven't done anything wrong. And all the bad things he thinks about me are not true. And all the good things he thinks about me are not even, uh, they're actually much better than what he thinks. Have, not, you, ever not considered, only have you ever considered that a hero is a guy who gives out the meat to everyone else? No. Okay. You want to eat the damn meat then? Okay. I'm hungry. Listen, great Sphinx, okay? Maybe I could have gotten the goods in a better way. In fact, I probably definitely could have. It's crazy okay? how in a way. Feel. Shut up! You had your time! Shut up! Listen, great Sphinx. It's disgusting. I apologize for the way that I went about getting those goods. But I do not apologize for how I distributed uh, distributed them 
throughout the party, giving everyone pretty much equal. And if you'll remember, I gave Asmin more than uh, than what was fair because I, I I let him keep an extra gem. So that's how I justify it. He nods and he takes a step towards you, bringing Timmy with him, cradled in his in two of his wings. Says that. It, it saying the word apology definitely in these circumstances takes a great deal of moral courage but what I'm curious about is that you enforced your own moral core, a code after your friend risked his life to retrieve that undead device and had no means to effectively resist but not before that is this truly the oath that you've sworn between justice at any cost and greatness at any cost. Is there truly a difference? Well, think about it like this. I'm going to interject. What starts with P besides Paladin? Pussy ass bitch. Sphinx looks down and stares at you. Tell me, tell me what are the potential outcomes? What do you think he can answer with to that? How does that help? How does it? Why? Listen, I Yes, I, like I said, did I kind of force Asmund to give me the stuff because he was a little bit hurt? Okay, sure. But you know what? I, I, It's not like I wanted to hurt him or I did it to hurt him, okay? I have saved his life on numerous occasions where he has not done that for me, okay? So... In order to achieve the greatest good possible, I was protecting him. He didn't need to. I didn't need to have to save his life because I was protecting him. The greatest good possible included me having to do something I did not want to do, but was necessary to ensure the survival of our party. I, but, uh, like I said, I apologize for how I went about it. I, uh, I step forward to the cat yet again, and I say. Are we friends or are we foes? That kind of thing you decide for yourselves. But what is the point of your judgment when all three members here have followed their true nature the entire, the entire journey? He leans towards you and says, who ever thought or said that I was looking and judging you by right and wrong? Do I look like some kind of arbiter that even cares? Did you not think this entire time I'm simply looking at the fabric of your souls? Turns back to McConnell. Says, My soul is Gucci. <laughs> Turns back to McConnell and says, You remind me of someone who walked this hall a long, long time ago. And I have only one question to ask of you. The same question I asked of her. You say that you used that forest to do the right thing. And you did press the advantage. And you did it for your friends. Can you honestly swear an oath in front of me? That way, if you were at your weakest and you had the least means to resist, would you truly put your life on the line for your friends in the same way that you wielded force and power? Could you truly swear that to me? You said her. <laughs> McConnell's a girl. <laughs> he's got his, his patron's a girl. It, it, he might be talking about the very god that McConnell gets his strength from. McConnell, you there? Do you want to make a religion check before you respond? Yes. And I okay. <laughs> As the Sphinx's words are resonating in you, you can feel a hint of sadness in its voice. And you remember back in the haze of that mushroom experience that you had you remember that first glyph that alerted you about the rules 
of the Trials of the Past. Or the Trials of the Present and the Trials of the Past as well. They were both written in a, lingu in a language that you did not understand, but you could still read. And it reminds you of the small teaching you got a long time ago. A language that no mortal can read, but all mortals can understand. The language of truth. The language of Varus. It's said to be a language not to let people communicate, but rather it is the very language that the entire fabric of this world is written on or so it is passed on in your doctrine. While there are many holy rites, and there is many old philosophies discarded at the advent of the religion of Esther, this one legend remained. A language of truth, then you realize in this moment, those glyphs, this area, it is not a language of gods, but rather, it is a language that gives truth and meaning to gods. And these temples, this trial, all of it is meant to give birth to something far more than any mortal coil can resist. And that's Shit. one thing you get in your memory as you hear his voice drop into a deep, sad, but slightly aggressive rumble. Uh... Okay, so I'm thinking about this a after he asked me the question, right? If I can swear the oath? Yes, definitely. Okay. I... I I look at the Great Sphinx after thinking, you know, a little bit and, and recognizing all this. And I... I I, uh, I simply answer yes, I, 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 I will. Or I do. I can. can. See, you can see some glyphs just kind of form around you. And they kind of fall into your hands and just vanish. And he says, take this with you and paint it on your heart when you want to seal the deal. But I've put a lot of pressure on you all. I'm not planning to force you to do that today. But heed my words. Take a step back. He tries to shield uh, Timmy from the flame. And he says, Frankly, if I may speak honestly, your performances this trial were middling at best. Especially for the treasure that I have been charged to guard. But you had someone come by and vouch for you. She made a very convincing case. A case that can only be made once in one's lifetime. Belly. Would you like your prize? Barbarian, warlock, paladin. I, uh, the fact is that since I, do I still have the bag? I think I, st if I still have the bag, I should just take everybody's prizes that way. Nope, you don't uh, have, it. have You don't have it, I do. But I'm well, not gonna, we I'm never not gonna... figured out who the Dawn Reaver was, though. I want to know who the Dawn Reaver is. What does it have anything to do with this right here? That's nothing to do. That that time's over. Asking who the Dawn Reaver is, that's over, dude. Who is it? We don't know. Don't He's know. asking us about the treasure. Do we want the treasure? I mean, I, that's, I'm pretty sure you're more focused on that, aren't you? I want to know who it is. He nods. He says, if that is something that you want to know, you will find out shortly. And you can see the ceiling above you starts to swirl. And you can see that those stars at the very, very top start to warp and it, almost like that, that small center, it's almost like the center of a cosmic phenomenon starts to glow and a light starts to go down. And he says, the treasure I guard is in that light. I cannot tell you what it is, not because I'm being a, a jerk or anything. I, mer I, I merely do not know. Five times people have passed my trial. Many more have failed. Each of those five 
times. What happened when it passed through that gate? It's changed every single time. But I will tell you, not a single time has anyone ever regretted the power that they pulled from within this temple. Are you ready to roll the dice? I'm yes. ready. Yes. 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 Yes, queen. Give me the behelot. All right. He takes a step back and he holds on to your friend for you and says, I'll return him the next time we meet again because there will be a next time. He takes a step back and lets you walk into the light. You guys all going to go through? Yes. Yeah. Yes, undoubtedly. All right. You can feel your heartbeats. It's slower, not dangerously slow. You feel a sense of calm. All the fatigue that you've gotten and all that stress from battling each of these trials and all the battles before him start to melt away, start to lift up into the light. Another room starts to form around you. And in front of you, you see a crystal. What is that? Each gear turns. Clunk, 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 one at a time. Re just reverberating across the room. Forget to it's almost in time with each of your heartbeats. It thrums with a power that you've never quite felt. But just like that script, that you didn't understand it, but you knew what it meant. That same sense of mystery applies here. This is unknown, but you feel like you've been next to this crystal your entire life. It doesn't beckon at you. It just seems to seethe your souls away from the air, just wafting through the wound, just keeping them nice. It's very gently having them, and you can see various shadows of yourself moving toward the crystal, various memories. Some of fighting goblins, some of fighting demons, some of eating chicken tendies, all kind of memories. Barbarian, Asmongold, what memory do you see in this moment, the most cherished one in this chapter of our story? Winning the chicken tendy challenge over McConnell, because remember how I won? Remember how I, I beat I beat McConnell? McConnell, do you remember that? Uh, yeah. Is he talking to me or is he like? Uh, I remember. I remember whenever. This I is a beat memory, him. dude. I don't think this memories is, can talk. Yeah, <laughs> I remember. I remember that. You do remember, and you can see kind of a, vis a visage. It's kind of floating by, and on one facet of the crystal, of you standing and shouting as a whole bunch of people just pound the drinks in the room as McConnell finishes this last tendy. You were there, just a little bit, a little bit before him. McConnell, you can see various visages pass through as well. What was your most cherished memory? Um, when I when I saved the uh, lady on the boat from oh. dying, and then talked the uh, captain down from uh, from executing anyone, and having everybody uh, get safe passage to the uh, the city. That's a, that's a very good one. And you can see a whole bunch of facets of the look uh, of absolute fear and terror uh, in her eyes, right? And the relief uh, when she left Heaven's Heel at the last time um, after she had talked to Eximus and that small breath of thanks that she and her apprentice gave as it left into the city uh, to try to pursue a new life after having made, made a deal with the devil. Rich, what was your most cherished memory? In the moment when Ms. Shit died, I, uh, I felt like I'd been struck with a curse. But then I realized that I was blessed for the life I had. I've had a fulfilling life thanks to you, Ms. Shit. And I know what's important to me now as a human being, and I want to keep living. You feel a small arm, or maybe the phantom of one, on your right shoulder. 
And as you notice that all of you are starting to swirl into light, you realize that you aren't alone. <laughs> Mishit is still with you and will stay with you into eternity. As you can feel the, this light draw you in as if it's sucking your memories, it doesn't feel like it's taking your life. Rather, you feel completely calm and you feel like there's something waiting to happen. But there's another presence in this room. Just like all three of you revisited your memories and saw your memories swirling by, there's another memory in this room. You catch a glint of behind all the gears, there's a small blue rock thrumming with gears swirling around it, driving each of these larger gears setting this entire room into motion. It's dripping blue blood. And you can feel some small memories emanating from it, gradually growing louder. The first one, a meeting after bursting out of an animal, coughing on the ground, and looking up to see a barbarian, a warlock, and a paladin. A second one, watching from the side, one blue hand outstretched in concern, as a barbarian walks into a corrupted pile of filthy sand to pull out a spike that's ailing the forest. Another memory of breathing heavily, holding her breath, and jumping into a bag, trusting the one person that she sees in front of her, a paladin. Jumping into a portal, looking back and holding Ozzy's hand, and feeling pain as the portal shatters around her. Another memory, back to back with a gem collector, Ozzy, fighting through monsters and animating from the forest, the same enchanted force that you were in as if there were unrest, sending a message to someone in Paladin, saying that it's all up to you. And finally, a conversation right after the fight as they are running, trying to get somewhere and stopping. A discussion growing more and more heated with the last word, the last memory. Defeating the Dawn Reaver will be up to you. And the memory becomes clearer and clearer and clearer until you can almost see it as if something wants you and something feels that you absolutely must hear what this memory has to say. What does it say? Oh, shit. Let's not waste any more time. Listen to what I have to say. Please. The fate of your world hangs in the balance. Please? Deception drips from your tongue. Only a demon would so thoroughly disguise their words. <sighs> Why is it that when you mortals think of fiends, you always default to demons? I'm something a bit more... devilish. <gasps> you're... you're a... dread devil? Good. If you know that much, that will certainly make things easier. Time elf. S stay back! You may be powerful, but my death will only... There's no need to do anything rash. I know you can force truthful answers. I know what your people protect. I'm here to request access to the Time Crystal for myself and my companions. If you know that much, then you know you'll need my cooperation. What does the devil want with my people's crystal, our Epoch Tuner? <sighs> for eons, devil and demon have schemed for control of the underworld. That animosity has left your world relatively untouched. Not for much longer. This balance has been broken. By what? By the Dawn Reaver. A mere human, and yet her power is unimaginable. She wields the legendary sword, Aurora. Though corrupted, its holy power is undeniable. 
With that blade alone, she has cut swathes through our opposition. She has chosen to align with the demons. A single human? But if the balance of power tips in favor of the demons... Then the devils will be subjugated, and the newly unified underworld horde will have only one place to go next. To here, the material plane. Indeed, her influence among the demonic hordes grows. Two demon lords have already aligned with her. Yet worse is her undead hordes. They already taint the material plane. The Epoch Tuner cannot help you. Your kind aren't capable of attuning to it. But... Wait. So you realize it then. Those heroes, they can. It's distasteful, but I have no other option. The crystal will grant them power beyond their dreams. In due time. Do they know? Your companions? <laughs> McConnell would never believe the words of a devil, much less work with one. Richard's desire for carnal pleasures is tempered by his loyalty to his allies, and Asmongol's materialism is contrasted by his loathsome heroism. When annihilation is the alternative, I can afford no such risk. Yet if I agree to help you, they are doomed to a lifetime of endless battle. And working with the devil. I think it's worse for you, Elf. You know the attunement will require your willing sacrifice. What are your demands? Oh, I'm not worried about my life. I'm worried about trusting you. I trust your story of this Dawn Reaver only because you are bound by my truth magic. But if you agree to remain restrained... For what? An eternity? <laughs> Absolutely not. That would be a death sentence for a devil. There's no point in saving the planes if I'm doomed in either case. But I am willing to play by your rules while Don Riva's heart still beats. Wait, you're just agreeing. Just like that. It really is that bad, isn't it? Yes, it is. Let's get this over with. I... Osterion, invoke my true name to seal this contract. You have yourself a deal, Time Elf. Don't think that you can twist this bargain to your own ends once I'm gone, devil. I look forward to seeing how you interfere from beyond the grave, Elf. In any case, there's no time to lose. I will bring my companions to the temple and... It's too late. I can already sense it. The undead are on the shores of Moon Wharf. And I think that's where we're going to call this season for today. Holy shit. Bruh. God damn. <laughs> are you kidding me? God damn. Are you fucking Holy kidding shit. me? Are wow. <laughs> oh my god. Dude. Wow. That was so fucking sick. Oh, that was so badass. That was so good, dude. Holy wow. shit. Holy wow. shit, dude. That was the incredible. sword, dude! The sword That's came back, right? That's dude. Really good sword, isn't it? Oh my god, man. This is That's it. That's good, right? I... Dude. Did you guys have a good time? Was it fun? <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah? That was fucking sick, man. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I, I Although did like I, it too. We definitely, I think we definitely could have done the the that last room better. Probably, like we just <laughs> we just completely <laughs> just forced our way through the traps and shit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's you know, as soon as that's I saw that crossbow thing, I just started popping off. Let's be honest, I did. Yeah, that was incredible. Riku, you've done an amazing job. Riku. And I, I want to get, guys, let's get some hearts in the chat for Riku D20. Twitch.tv slash Riku D20. He's been the one who's put together this whole campaign along with the rest of our production team. And it's been pretty incredible. Uh, I, I want to say thank you very much, man. 
most definitely. Yeah. I cannot take all the credit myself, not by any step of the imagination. I definitely uh, am here uh, driving uh, the tip of the spear in, but I have a lot of support uh, from a lot of staff uh, that's uh, actually in staff chat right now. Uh, they can hear me. You guys have been awesome. And of course, I want to thank everyone that's been with us <laughs> through this entire, man, it's been uh, it's been eight sessions, eight weeks. Uh, I know that this is a, a pretty big time commitment. I really appreciate every, every one of you that's been watching. And of course, uh, those of you folks uh, in the EU time zone, I know it's getting late for you guys. Uh, that is uh, That means a lot to me that you guys stuck around. And of course, for those of you that have been following around, uh, of course, it's uh, it's been it's been an absolute pleasure. Asvin, Rich, McConnell, you guys are absolutely amazing players. I had an absolute blast every one of these Saturdays. It's been real. It's been so fucking good. It sure has. Yeah. Uh, just to just to go back to and, and think about uh, how much work was put into this, you know, I, I go back all the way. Man, Rico, I'm trying to think when we first started talking to each other about this when Super initially reached out. I, I mean, honestly, probably six plus months ago. Yeah. Um, that, yeah. that this actually started. And, you know, initially, um, I, I had planned to do uh, like a lot more work in, in on, on like behind the scenes on the campaign and because of everything that was going on at OTK because of everything that was going on with me that uh, the amount that Riku and Super and all of these people behind the scenes instantly just took charge of this entire campaign and Pecky's also coming in uh, making sure that everything with the show worked this show 100% would not have happened would not have been where it is if Super did not approach us all those months ago, if Riku didn't absolutely impress us all of those months ago, I, I, I'll never forget the first night that we all got together and we all played, and Asma was just like, what time are we fucking doing this shit, boys? Uh, I'll never forget that night. Riku yep. instantly impressed us, and uh, Super has, who, who you guys haven't gotten to meet, as much as just done so much behind the scenes. It, it, thank you to everybody who made the show possible it's been amazing like yeah thank you guys so much i am uh i, I didn't expect all this stuff at the, at the very end it was amazing like yeah yeah that that, so that fuck it. <laughs> dude just hearing the the name drops was fucking epic yeah it was it was lay epic but unironically dude <laughs> it, it, that was like the second that I heard McConnell, I, I got like the most intense nerd chills in my entire life. I was just like, yep. oh shit, they yep. know us. Yeah. <laughs> We're in the game. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I, 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 had a, I had a really good time. I, I did. It, it's definitely been a really fun time. I, I never really have played a full D&D campaign before. I played it with my friends a few times here and there, but I don't think we've ever really gone beyond like I think two sessions before. So like actually doing one and taking it all the way through has been uh, really good. But yeah, thank you guys so much for uh, for being part of this, and thank you everybody who's watched for being part of it just as much as we have. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Uh, well, it's weird. It really is weird to uh, to kind of like wrap everything up. But I, I do want to say also, again, a uh, huge shout out to like Peckies and everybody else, Super, and everybody on production who's helped us do everything. Uh, it's been, uh, it, it would have been impossible to do this without them. And um, also uh, to McConnell and Rich for uh, being our, uh, our our other adventurers and companions in this. And also to, uh, to Riku, who's made all of this possible. So again, uh, Riku D20 on Twitch, if you guys want to give him a follow and give him some support. And uh, guys, I really hope that you enjoyed the first season of D&D. &D. Uh, I really do. And um, thank you everybody for watching it and, and being so supportive over the uh, over these months. Especially on YouTube. I read all the YouTube comments. Yeah, they're always they're always so, uh, you know, it's like it's rare because like it's they're really supportive of Riku and the campaign and and everything. So uh, thanks a lot. For, for being there and watching and, and shit like that, guys. That's I read awesome. them too. Yeah, dude, I read every single one. <laughs> I read all the comments all the <laughs> same time. Here, same here. Yep. Well, you guys have anything else to say? Nah, just, uh, yeah, it's, it was fun and can't wait to do it again.
Yeah, oh, and wow. I, w- one thing that I will say too, because uh, I know that this will probably be one of the the D and D things that does actually pop up, like because I know it's already being worked on. Because uh, I've gotten to talk to Super about it like very briefly a few times. I know that Riku is going to be doing like a one off campaign. Uh, like I, I'm pretty sure Riku, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's just going to be like one night zombie style campaign on your stream sometime in the near future. Correct? That's correct. It is yeah. going to be a um, a very horrifying and bone chilling uh, adventure. Uh, so we'll see kind of uh, when we can land that. Yeah, so I I know that that one's already underway, and that's that's kind of like that not related to this campaign, just like one night, sit down, all the story is going to be all at once. So definitely be sure to follow Riku on social media so you guys don't miss that. And obviously, you know, when that's actually coming along, um, you, you know, uh, we'll we'll do what we can too uh, on our part to let everybody know that it's happening, whether it's on stream or uh, if the times line up actually ho- hosting it. But uh, you guys already know how much of a show Riku can put on. So when he actually does boot up that stream for the first time, definitely uh, show him some love there sure there um, it is right there and yeah guys thank you all so much for watching i really appreciate it um it's been quite an adventure and thank you guys all for joining us for it but i think uh this will be the end of the first campaign thank you all very much for watching and until next time boys peace <laughs>